Seattle didn't fall for the cheese and took care of business handily against the Frisco Independence Knights. Let's slide into the 1845 Taste Texas Highlight Desk. If any of those was a concern headed into Argyle's fourth district game, it was quickly laid to rest as the Eagles came out playing with their hair on fire in what proved to be sheer domination at Kirkendall Stadium in Frisco. On the third play of the game, Jake Kreckler gives Argyle the lead. It's going to be a handoff. He finds a hole on the left side, and then he cuts it out, and off into the race as he goes. 15, 10, 5, and into the end zone. 39-yard touchdown run on third and three for Jake Kreckler. Eagles strike first, six on the board for Argyle. 7-0 Argyle. And that was just the beginning, as Argyle scored on each of its first eight possessions of the game. Lane Stewart with a touchdown catch, while Kriziak with an incredible snag in the back of the end zone. Kreckler had another touchdown, Gasperson runs one in, and sophomore Braden Bach caught two touchdowns in the first half. This one had some magic after the catch. Play action here to Kreckler. Now Gasperson's going to throw, and he's got Bach going down the seam. Oh, and he breaks a tackle. Nice move by Braden Bach, the sophomore at the eight-yard line, and then walks into the end zone for the touchdown. A 31-yard touchdown pass. McGuire, Gasperson to Braden Bach, and six more on the board for the Eagles. Argyle leads at the half 49 to nothing. The offense was efficient in the first half, scoring on every possession and scoring 42 points on their first 16 plays. The defense equally as efficient as they hold independence to three plays or less on every drive in the first half except for one. Only one drive had a first down for independence. Their lone takeaway in the first half came from the hands of Thomas Irwin. Devin Cox has checked in as the running back. And now throw right down the middle of the field. It's going to be intercepted. Overthrown. Thomas Irwin's got it. He's bringing it back. He cuts it to the right. He's to the 40. He's to the 35. And Reese Coburn, or Coburn Reese, the quarterback, has to make the tackle. Argyle has it all the way back at the 31-yard line of Independence. A 41-yard interception return for Thomas Irwin. And once again, Argyle, great field position in Independence territory. And in the second half, it was Colton Rockmore with a pick. Third down and nine. This pass is too tall and intercepted. Colton Rockmore's got it. It was overthrown. Rockmore has it just kind of land in his stomach. He's going to bring it back to the near side of the field and be run out of bounds in Independence territory at the 48-yard line. Argyle puts up a pair of touchdowns in the second half, and this one is done. Here's Kenny to wrap this thing up. Argyle takes a knee here, does Jarrett Wagner. Victory formation, and that'll do it tonight here at David Kirkendall Stadium in Frisco. Argyle Eagles will move to 4-0 in district play following a 63-0 victory tonight over the Frisco Independent Knights. A look at some of the numbers from this one. Independence was held to 70 total yards and just two on the ground. They were over 11 on third down and only gained four first downs on the night. Offensively, 411 total yards for Argyle, 209 on the ground, 202 through the air. 7 of 10 on third down, 20 first downs, and 63 points on the scoreboard. We're going to take our first break in the pregame show, and when we return, we'll hear from the head coach of Argyle's opponent tonight, Ditton's Billy Miller. Stay with us. A trusted community staple for over 15 years, Rapid Med Urgent Care is more than just an urgent care. From well checks to minor emergency care, our goal is to keep you well or get you feeling better sooner. We also now offer Rapid Wellness, providing therapeutic IV infusions, injections, weight loss options, and allergy testing and treatment. Walk-ins are welcome or visit rapidmed.com and book your visit today. Rapid Med Urgent Care, your hometown emergency care doctors with Texas-sized hearts and proud support of our Argyle Eagles. Park Place is proud to support Argyle High School and all you Eagles fans out there. You deserve to feel like a winner, whether you're cheering on your favorite team or shopping for your new favorite car. And at Park Place Lexus Grapevine and Land Rover DFW, you'll enjoy a fully customized luxury dealership experience that'll make you feel like the MVP. So head over to your nearest Park Place dealership or visit parkplace.com and see what makes them the experts in excellence. This scouting report segment is brought to you by Park Place. And on our Park Place phone line right now is the head coach of the Ditton Broncos, Billy Miller. Hey, coach. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, first off, let's let's start things off by saying congratulations on earning your first playoff berth as a head coach. That had to be a pretty special moment for you. 
Yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Um, been been really proud of the way that our that our team and our program has uh, has grown up this year, and and uh, it was just an exciting uh, exciting moment for uh, you know just to have that that culmination there on uh, on last Friday night. You know, I, I know it's not the end all be all. You got some district games left, and of course, your playoff run can be whatever you want it to be. Um, but did you allow your kids to celebrate a little, and d- did you take a moment to soak it in as well? Well, I think you you always are reflecting on on the the good things and and certainly the things that you need to work on and and um, when you have something big like that happen, it uh, it definitely is good to be able to let it sink in and, and let it kind of marinate. Uh, but but at the end of the day, I mean, we're we're out here. We know that that the season and uh, everything that we've worked for to to this point, you know, we're we're not done with uh, we're not done with this season, and and now we've kind of given ourselves a chance to extend the season. So, we're just excited about what it means for for our program and the trajectory. And um, you know, we got a lot of young kids playing right now, and and it just it means a lot for uh, everybody that's involved in in what we're trying to do right now. And I know it means a lot to you because. Um... You know, when I think about the Ditton Broncos, you know, I think a very, very tradition rich school. We talked about that in our interview last year. It's one of the oldest schools in the area. They've been playing football forever. There's a ton of very successful pros that have come through that school. Um, you personally, as a coach, I mean, to, to be the guy that brings the playoffs back to Ditton High School, that, um, I don't, what does that mean to you? Well, it's been a it's been a very long road, and and you know we've we've faced some some challenges over the last you know handful of years, and and it, it's really it's it's one of those deals where you you try to you try to focus on on the good things that you're able to create day in and day out. And I know that um, there there hadn't been a, a whole lot of success, and obviously we haven't been back to the playoffs since uh, 2016, but there's been so many good things um, in and around the program over the last, you know, six, seven years that, that I, I try to really get our guys to focus on, whether it's the coaching staff or the community or the players. And, um, you know, this year they've, they've just really bought into our kids have really bought into it. Our, our coaches have really bought into it. Just the idea that, that good things are, are, are capable here. And um, we, um, we we love the the tradition and we love all the things that that go around that but we we really want to focus on the the people that we have in the program right now and allowing them to kind of build on tradition but knowing that um that that good things will happen for them and that they um they are the ones that are that are creating the narrative every every single day so just allowing them to to kind of grow up in that mindset and you know we we've, we've did it this year you know we we started out a little bit slow this year you had a young team and have just been coming along and we just we feel really good about the way that that they progressed and and climbed up that that mountain this year and and it and it paid off for them uh last friday night well this is uh billy miller the head coach of the ditton broncos on with us in the your new door.com pregame show and you, you know what's really funny is is if you ask coach rogers he would say after year six was the turning point of his program and last year was your sixth year. So uh, maybe there are some similarities for you, and, and maybe it just takes you know some time to get your foothold, and, and now you got a hand on your sub-varsities, and now you kind of have things the way you want them. So uh, I, I could see this definitely be a, a springboard uh, for your program. You know, there's a there's a lot of truth in that. Um, I, I I got some great advice um, from from uh, actually from my defensive coordinator, and this was this was at the beginning of my tenure here when um, Coach Plunk was over at uh, at Ryan, and and um, he uh, he kind of said the exact same thing to me. He said, you know, you know, when I first started out, when he was a head coach out in Hallsville, he said, when I first started out, I thought these things were going to happen, and and lo and behold, it took me about six years to really get everybody where where I wanted them and and how it was going to look and 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 have everything going in the kind of direction that I had envisioned. And uh, so it's kind of funny to hear you say that uh, that Coach Rogers kind of said the same thing that uh, you know year six was kind of the the turning point. Um, you know we worked really hard over the last couple of years. Uh, to to really ensure that our uh, that our sub varsities were were making making headway and doing the right things because you know the the development of the program is 
is one of the the most significant pieces that people sometimes tend to overlook and um we've we've done a great job with the staff and and getting our our sub varsities in a in a in a place where they're they're developing well within our system and and, and growing up within our program and and now we're hopefully we're reaping the benefits you know uh for for a long term deal all right, coach. Final question for you. Uh, I don't want to let you get away without talking a little bit about your team. Uh, last year, you know, the story was your running back, Coco Brown, but uh, you've been able to, I mean, not replace, but maybe replace his statistics in a way. But uh, but talk to us about some of your kids. Um, you, know, you know, we're obviously going to hear some of the names on the broadcast, but, uh, you know, t- tell us about your captains and, and who make your who makes your team click off the field. Well, you know, our team captains are, uh, you know, middle linebacker Jacob Kaufman, um, our center uh, Tanner Obertron, uh, quarterback uh, Lawson Floyd, and uh, and our big big left tackle uh, Hayden Gunner, and um, you know they just they've been instrumental in in guiding this team and and kind of getting um, really really kind of getting it out of uh, out of the coach's hands and and to me that's always one of the biggest pieces of uh, of really growing your program is when do the when do the kids start to take the ownership in the in the program when is it when does it stop being the the coaches that are that are pushing them in a in a certain direction every time and they and they step up and they say no this is this is our team this is our group and and uh and and we're gonna we we care about this more than than anything and um the these four guys they've they've really done a, a great job of of coming out going to work whether it's you know coming through last spring or coming off you know some heartbreak last year against uh, against Lake Dallas and you know these guys have have really stepped up through the off season to you know provide a a landscape a, a base for um what what the rest of the team can can kind of follow um you know some of these guys are are some of the hardest workers I've ever been around I I can't tell you uh, how many times I've had to had to kick Hayden Gunner out of the out of the weight room, and uh, and and it's just um, it, it's a pleasure to watch guys that that really want to take ownership in in the product that they're putting on the field and the in the way that they go through the the class day. Um, being leaders in the building as well as out here in the field house, and you know it's a that's a huge deal. Well, that's awesome, Coach. Well, I appreciate your time. Best of luck to you and your team, and uh, be careful getting down to Argyle. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, coming up next in the YourNewDoor.com pregame show, we hear from Coach Rogers and his keys to victory before Argyle takes on Denton. That's up next, brought to you by the Argyle Eagles Booster Club. This is Billy Klein. DSW Door Repair was repairing, restoring, and replacing doors and houses all over town when a couple of guys from Austin showed up and said, Billy, we need to take this nationwide. I said, I don't know how to do that. They said, we do. And that's how YourNewDoor.com was born. I'm telling you this in case it all works out and we become a big deal nationwide. You'll be able to say, I was there the day it was born. Billy and Jennifer help sponsor our ball games. Check it out, yournewdoor.com. Howdy, folks. Marty B. here, inviting you to come to each of our four amazing restaurants. At Marty B.'s, join us for an outstanding atmosphere of family, food, fun, and entertainment. Or join us at Rustico Wood Fired Grill and Wine Bar for an intimate date night in a rustic, elegant setting. Looking for a taste of upscale Texas? Join us at 1845, where it's designed like Dallas, but tastes like Fort Worth. Come experience amazing at all of our fine restaurants. And new this summer, put a pep in your two-step at Marty B.'s Coffee Co., right next to Marty B restaurant. Look forward to seeing you there. Four oh seven barbecue brings us this week's weekly flyover with the head coach of the Eagles, Todd Rogers. Fresh off of your district win, uh, dominant win over Independence, and uh, coach, there were a few things that. I feel like could have set you up for a trap game if you'd let them. First, with it, it was a short week with it being a Thursday game, so a day less of preparation. It's a team that that's a little down, where maybe a lot of teams would just say, you know, we don't have to do that much game planning this week. And probably the biggest one is you're coming off of a really, really big win at home against Emerson. So when you combine all of those, I feel like you had an opportunity to slip up, but I think we knew within the first 20 seconds of the game that was not going to be the case. That was a very business-like approach for your Eagles on Thursday night. Right, and uh, all those things were talked about, um, addressed, and and discussed, and and um, you know our kids uh, knew what um, uh, knew what they needed to do. 
Uh, we focused on us getting better last week. Um, you know, we were trying to continue to make um, McGuire as comfortable as we probably can offensively. Uh, and then defensively, um, you know, we had a few uh, new parts to the puzzle. And, uh, you know, we were, we were steadfast with our training and our and regime that we used during the week. And, and uh, we even practiced on Wednesday morning um, and then came back during fourth period, did the same uh, like a pregame uh, Thursday routine during the period. So they had two practices on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, I think it paid off when we got there Thursday. So I wanted to talk about your running back, your bell cow, uh, Jake Kreckler, who's kind of <clears throat> grown into that role here the past few weeks. And, uh, you know, you and I were talking, and uh, if I need to, I can edit this out. But you said Jake Kreckler in his first game, a little wide-eyed coming down from Colorado. And, I mean, that's no slouch he was going against against Melissa. Uh, but I would have to think that's all gone because that kid, when he gets downhill, he's searching for contact. If there's a guy between him and the goal line, he's going through him. So – What's what's it been like to watch his growth uh, as he's turned into you know one of your premier skill position guys? Yeah, I absolutely think Jake has grown exponentially uh, from the early parts of the season. Uh, obviously, the heat and the anxiety of of fulfilling that position and and uh, a lot of factors, knowing what to do now, uh, being comfortable with what the expectations are offensively, being comfortable with the expectations of the demands of practice. Um, all those are factors for somebody new coming in. Uh, he moved in in January. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, there was there, he hadn't had any seasonal experience, but uh, to go through spring ball and do the things that we need him to do, yeah, we're very proud of him. You know, the, the obviously the offensive line is blocking, you know, much more consistently. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we have a, a better plan moving forward with our run game. Uh, and how that looks, too. So I, I think there's a lot of factors to his success. You know, following the Emerson game, uh, I think he won, you know, one of your players of the week, just uh, his ability to carry the ball and, more importantly, not cough it up. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's been running really well. He was a kid that, that, that moved in. Uh, Firestone on your offensive line has moved in, and then you got another move in recently on your defensive line in Trotter. Um, so that's three new additions to your team that kids that are new to the team but new to the community, which – can't be very easy to transition in, but you know you get to see these these boys on on a daily basis. How do you think they're fitting in here in Argyle? Well, it's been odd um, because we haven't had a, a varsity move in contributor since 2020, and so um, you know uh, you would expect our community growing the way it is that we that might be a little bit more frequent, but it really hasn't been frequent. But uh, these three young men have made huge contributions to our team. Uh, we already have some really good players uh, already here. And so for them to come in and, and accent what we're already doing uh, says a lot about their work ethic and their character and, and the acceptance of, of our community with them moving here and, and getting um, into the fold real quickly. This, uh, this upcoming week, senior night at, at Eagle Stadium, I'm curious, you know, your, your view of the season is, is so much broader than a, than a single game. You know, you're, you're probably looking forward to playoffs and matchups and where you're going to play and what time and – do you ever kind of stop down on senior night and, and, and just think about, man, these, it's probably a special moment for these boys. It's the last game that they're probably going to play at Eagle Stadium. Well, we I do. Um, I don't get as nostalgic as maybe uh, I probably need to. Um, but it's, uh, it's a special moment. I, I, I keep the moment for what it is. Um, I learned a long time ago we try to stay as present as we possibly can for this you know, for this long season and for these generational groups to go through. Uh, but, um, yeah, we need to leave it in its category and uh, do everything possible. We, Our parents do a good job of recognizing the, the date. Um, we build to this crescendo of senior night so they can be recognized. Um, but but quickly, we you know, we, we move on uh, to the next biggest thing in the year. So, it's just part of our regular schedule. You know, we got our preseason games, our district games, and our and our postseason games, and we have our homecomings, and we have our senior nights. So we need to give it the proper uh, attention that it needs, and then we, we fold back into more of the team concepts uh, to remain the rest of the season. You know, so for someone like Jake Kreckler or Leighton Firestone, you know, they, they, they play a total of five games at Eagle Stadium, but a kid like – I mean, think about how many games Bud Petter – has seen at Eagle Stadium, right, you know, right. through Chase playing and him playing. I don't well, right. Well, but you think <laughs> about all their all their youth games are played there yeah, too. Yeah. So there's been a lot of times those parents have sat in those bleachers and watched those kids excel and run to the red 
you know, in those end zones. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm not – I felt like I'm knocking a little bit, but I'm really no. not. It's it's uh, it's very special. Uh, it was special when Cooper played, uh, and it's special for some of the kids, you know, that have, have had this, this long-standing – uh, enrollment in Argyle High School. Back in one minute with Coach Rogers, keys to victory against Denton right after this. Buying or selling a home is likely your greatest investment. Lori Jacobson and the Legacy Group believe in making the process easy and simple for your family. Whether you're moving into your forever home in Argyle, need help remodeling or staging, or are a first-time buyer, Lori's dedicated to making sure all of her clients walk away from the transaction satisfied. She has a saying that you walk in as a client, but you leave as a friend. So it's no secret why she's been named Best Real Estate Agent by D Magazine yet again. Lori Jacobson encourages all the Argyle Eagles to leave a legacy bowl on and off the field. Go Eagles. 407 Barbecue is a proud supporter of the Argyle Eagles. Named the very best barbecue in all of DFW several times over, 407 Barbecue offers an array of award-winning smoked meats, including mouth-watering brisket and ribs. No plate is complete without one of their world-famous sides and a bowl of Grandma's Banana Pudding. Family owned and operated by your neighbors right here in Argyle. See their menu and catering options online at 407BBQ.com. Or see for yourself at I-35W, exit 407, 407 Barbecue. All right, back in the YourNewDoor.com pregame show. We're seated with Coach Rogers uh, before uh, kickoff uh, here uh, awaits us. And you're playing one of the oldest schools in the Metroplex, in the Denton Broncos. And, uh, you know, I feel like I do this to you a lot, but, you know, your early days of coaching, you know, you're looking at Denton Broncos, you know, the Denton Broncos up in 5A, 4A, wherever they were, and you're probably thinking, you know, that's forever away, especially as Argyle is, you know, 2A at the time. But here you are in the same district as the Denton Broncos. I'm sure personally that, that means uh, – I'm sure that's a pretty cool moment for you to go, you know, toe-to-toe against a, a prestigious school like this, but – you know, you saw them for the first time last year. Uh, this year, what are they rolling through, and, and what do the Broncos look like? Well, I'll give you a little bit about my history. Um, when I coached at Marcus, we actually went against Denton High School. And, uh, you know, so I researched it, and I knew everything I could about it, about, you know, traditionally being strong, one of the top North Texas teams. Um, and then, you know, multiple schools started opening, and, and um, you know, they kind of lost favor for a few years. But, uh, I saw where Coach Miller, who I coached at Marcus, you know, as the head coach, and I saw that um, it's the first time that they've made the playoffs since 2016. So that's a big congratulations, mm-hmm. you know, for building a program and nurturing a program for that kind of success. So uh, right now, Denton sits 3-1 uh, and one in the district. They're sitting in the second spot along with Lake Dallas. And so, you know, uh, they're, they're a team that's it's getting the needed wins here late in the season. And so we're, we're taking them very serious, and we've done a lot of things this week already to, to get our mind right and get, get prepared for them. Um, you know, we're, we'll need to keep the ball uh, offensively, and uh, the best offense is, a, you know, best defense is a good offense, and I've said that many a time, is we need to establish some drives and put some points on the board. And I think if we can do that, uh, get them frustrated, get them one-dimensional then offensively, then I think it benefits our defense. And our defense uh, has the – opportunities to put some pressure on their quarterback he's not a uh, a big mobile quarterback and I think we can put some pressure on him we can get some errant throws maybe get some turnovers which would be uh, my second point that the defense needs to continue to to stress uh, the offenses and and produce turnovers uh, for our offense to have opportunities and then our kicking game uh, we're doing some things uh, as we prepare for the playoffs in our kicking game uh, that we're going to utilize this week and I think that's going to benefit us greatly. Those are Coach Rogers' rapid mid keys to victory. Coach, appreciate your time. Best luck against Denton. Thanks. All right, one final break in the YourNewDoor.com pregame show. Kickoff just minutes away. This is Argyle Eagles Booster Club Broadcasting. This broadcast is made possible by the generous support of our corporate advertising sponsors who have enabled Argyle ISD athletic programs to achieve many exceptional accomplishments, including state championships in multiple sports and 10 straight Lone Star Cups. These sponsorships remain the primary source of funding for the Booster Club, which directs the expenditures towards Argyle athletics and clubs at the high school and middle school level. Your corporate sponsorship provides the best opportunity for our student athletes to reach their full potential here at Argyle ISD. And in return, we offer numerous advertising packages which fit your budget to brand your business with high visibility in the stadiums or right here on these airwaves. Do you want to be a sponsor and support the athletics here at Argyle ISD? Contact Brian and Shelly Stone at aebc.sponsorship at gmail.com to begin your support. Go Eagles! 
Hey, this is Brian Estridge, the voice of the TCU Horn Frogs, and I want to promote a neat tool that the Booster Club releases every Thursday. It's the Eagles Nest Podcast. Blake Jones and his team get you prepared each week for Argyle's next game by talking with one of the seniors for the football team, chatting with the head coach of that week's opponent, as well as spending some time with the Argyle head coach, Todd Rogers, including getting his keys for an Argyle victory. Plus, don't miss highlights from last week's game and the Argyle ISD Eagle update. Updating you on all the events headed your way around the school district. Check it out and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, that'll do it for me tonight. I'd like to thank Coach Miller and Coach Rogers for coming on the show. I'd like to thank you for listening. And now let's head out to Eagle Stadium and step inside the yournewdoor.com press box where Mitch Cullen and the legendary Kenny Arthur will take you the rest of the way. A bit of change of plans tonight as uh, a call to the bullpen as we are without the great Kenny Arthur, at least for the first half tonight. So stepping in, uh, I will be doing the play-by-play duties, and alongside to my left is Mitch Cullen. Thank you so much for joining us. Clark McNulty will join us momentarily on the sidelines. And uh, Mitch, here we are, a beautiful evening here in Argyle where they thought uh, the rain would keep some people away, but we got clear skies, got a blue sky and some lingering clouds. But, uh, you know, this game was moved up to 6 p.m. from 7 to avoid the rain, but that, that doesn't appear like it's going to be a problem tonight. No, it doesn't, and it's a great night. I mean, the weather's great. Like you said, the temperature's perfect, and everybody comes out to see uh, senior night. These kids have been here for a long time. They've all uh, achieved greatness in whatever it is that they did, whatever sport they played, and that's all what the senior night is about in band. And uh, you get to hear where the kids are going to, to college, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I know it's 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 got to be special, right, for the parents. Um, for sure. You know, you, you send a couple boys through here, and there's no telling how many hours you spend in these bleachers watching football. And, and what Coach Rogers told us in the pregame, it's, you know, they're taught to run to the red in the end zone. And, uh it's one of the few last few times they'll be able to do that. So I'm sure it's a it's a sentimental moment for families. Yeah, it's bittersweet for sure. Right? You have a ton of good memories, but um, for me, having three boys when that third one came across, um, it was more bitter than it was sweet. Just thinking about there was there was no more. But uh, it's a great moment, and, the, and Argyle does it right where they get the parents out there on the field uh, with the kids as they walk across because the parents have such a big role in these kids' lives, right? And they especially in the sports and band, they spend so much time taking these kids to lessons and, and programs and events and all that stuff. And it's just nice that they, they recognize the parents also. So captains uh, walking out to the Eagle at midfield. We got Hunter McFall, Brendan Hickman, Jake Kreckler, and John Gailey for Argyle. Let's see who some of the Denton Broncos are. Is, uh, let's go ahead and throw it down for tonight's coin toss. Clark is uh, standing by with the mic. Guys are gonna win the tonight, number 87, Hunter McFall. Number 97, Brendan Hickman. Number three, Jake Reckler. And so number 12, spin around, John spin Gailey. Around, y'all coin toss was pre-game. All right, Clark, you're up. You can tell us. Uh, so they did this before the game, the coin toss? Yes, Denton High won the toss and decided to defer to the second half. So Argyle will receive and they will be going against the wind to start the game. So wait, this is a reenactment? Is that what we've got? Yes. Oh. Never heard of such a thing. All right, so the uh, Argyle offense will begin with the football. So let's introduce you to the starters tonight when the Argyle Eagles have the football.
11 for defense. He's just going to throw it high and deep down the field, and that ball is going to be intercepted. Micah Roberts with the interception at the 25-yard line. Wow. It's Argyle football, first interception of the year for Michael. for your Argyle Eagles. And while we have a minute before Ditton kicks off to begin this ball game, let's go down to Clark McNulty. And uh, Clark, what's the Chick-fil-A on 407 mood on sideline down there? Hey, it's a district game. This could be a sleeper for them, and they're well aware of it. So what I heard out of the offensive lineman was, hey, let's come out, hit them hard, and set the tone of the game right here. Let's come out and march the ball down the field and kind of break their will to compete. That's Clark McNulty with the mood on the sideline as Argyle will receive this first kickoff of tonight's game, moving right to left across your radio dial or if you're watching on YouTube, across your video screen as the kick flies into the end zone and it will be a touchback for the Argyle offense. They will begin tonight's ball game from their own 25. Since Cleaner's uniform update, Argyle in white hats tonight with the black tops, red pants. Uh, for uh, You're hitting all your colors, right? You're white, then you're black, and then you're red. Your Ditton Broncos tonight have a have a purple and gold palette. They've got gold helmets, white tops, and purple pants for the Broncos, who earned their first playoff berth since 2016 with a win uh, last week. And as they are st standing right now, they are tied for second in district. As McGuire Gasperson is your quarterback, it'll be his third game uh, starting for these Eagles. Jake Kreckler is standing to his left. Will Hodson. Lane Stewart and Will Kriziak are your receivers standing out wide. Has got a bit of a delay here. I think they're trying to get the chain gang set. As I think somebody forgot the down marker on the other side of the field. Kind of need that. Yeah, yeah. The whistle is blown, and here we go. Gasperson from the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. No, does hand it off to Krekler up the middle, running oh, left. Face the mask. face mask is tugged. The flag comes out, and uh, Krekler eventually brought down, but Jake battles his way to the 33, but you'd have to expect uh, they're gonna get a little more at the end of this one. Yeah, um, they grabbed it right off the bat. Is he is he picking his flag up? We didn't get the uh, the list okay, of we officials. We don't know who Face they are. mask, defense number 99. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. But you, you kinda wanna see that official run out there and, and take charge a little bit more on that call. He just kinda stood on the sideline. Yeah, that was Braylon Young, the guilty party there. That's going to put the football all the way up to the 49 as Gasperson throws a bubble screen out to Kriziak. He's got a couple blockers in front of him, hesitates across the Ditton 40, battles his way to the 30, and that's going to be a pickup of 22 for Will Kriziak. And Mitch, you love that. You throw the ball about 20 yards, and a run after catch is way more than that. Yeah, and he had a ton of space right there because they didn't have enough receivers out on Argyle, and Argyle saw it and threw out there and took advantage of it. Coffin brought him down, but not out until a gain of 22 for uh, Kriziak. Back to pass is Gasperson. I think the play broke down a little bit, does scramble, gains a couple before he's finally brought down by Marlon Ferguson, the uh, senior defensive lineman for Denton. Yeah, and he's a good runner. Argyle really doesn't want to see him run a ton just because they're not super deep behind him, but he is a, a very effective runner when he has to be. Gasperson claps, fakes the Ooh. play action, throw out wide, is intercepted! Denton with the early turnover in this one as a screen is picked off. And Lane Stewart on the uh, the tackle, but for the interception for the Broncos is Malachi Bone. And Mitch, that's the dangerous part about throwing those screens is if it's jumped, it's uh, it's intercepted in, in a big return normally. Yeah, and, and sitting here, you could see that before he let go of the ball, that the guy was just waiting for him to throw it. And, um, you know, that, that'll probably come you know, with a little bit more experience that he'll pick that up and won't make that throw. But 
you know, hopefully Argyle's defense is is stiff enough here that they won't get anywhere. So the second McGuire Gasperson interception of the year sets up the Broncos in good field position. They start at their own 47 with 11.03 on the clock. Pitch out to the running back. He's hammered on the end. Looks like that's uh, Garrett Westrom. The safety bringing him down. A gain of about four. As that is uh, Lamarcus Robinson on the carry, the six foot one senior running back. Yeah, big kid. But he did take a pretty good shot right there on the side as he was trying to cut up field. But he, when he picked up four. And a gain of four on first down. It's going to be another handoff to Robinson. He's barreling his way inside. Runs into a few Argyle Eagles. And that's Jack Teller. Going to bring down Robinson, but uh, didn't already into Argyle territory. This snap will come at the Argyle 46, but it is uh, third and three for the Broncos. Yeah, and he was breaking some tackles there. You know, if you look at it early in the game, his pad level was really high as he runs through there. And that's why he's going to take a beating if he's going between the tackles because his pad level is so high. Ten minutes to go in this first quarter. We're tied at zero. Another handoff, three straight up the middle for Robinson. He fights nearly to the line of scrimmage, but I think he's a, he's a little short, and this will be fourth and one. Max Bland's in there, Bud Petter's in there as well, and it's fourth and one. Looks like Denton is going to want to punt. Yeah, and you know what? There's a couple things coming to play here. They're in second place, right? And they don't always make the playoffs, so they kind of want to protect that. But also, they can flip the field, and Argyle is going against the win, and that's probably what they're thinking. If if we do punt, Argyle hopefully is going to have it. This is their thing inside the 10-yard line. Back to punt for... Denton is Jack Higgins, and back uh, for the return is Lane Stewart. As this is a short punt. It's yeah. going to roll a little bit into Argyle territory, but not the longest punt, as this is going to be about a 23-yard <laughs> punt. And uh, you'd like to see that as uh, Gasperson throws an interception, a dangerous one, could have gone for six, but a good tackle by Lane Stewart. Uh, but all in all, it's a wash, right? No points for either squad. Right, and, and uh, we've seen it so many times with these – other teams are just not good in the kicking game, and that was another one. He had the good end over end. If he got the ball in the middle of the field, they might have been in business. But yeah, it took a it took a big hop. It yeah. just, the hop went out of bounds. So Argyle will begin this possession. Nine twelve on the clock. They'll start at their own eighteen. Kreckler up the middle, splits a couple Broncos, and leans forward to the twenty yard line. Pick up of two for Jake Kreckler. Yeah, did a good job of running through that arm tackle right there. They had him at the line of scrimmage, and he fought for some extra yards. Gasperson with Kreckler to his right. Gasperson outright and dropped. That's Lane Stewart out there. Excuse me, Will Hodson out there. And uh, pass was online. Uh, Hodson just dropped it. May have been thinking about the catch or uh, the run after catch. Could the Sun have done something out there, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Because, you know, if you look over there on the sideline, all those guys are that part of the sideline's right in the Sun. There's no stands over on this side to block it from them. Third and eight, oh, Gasperson running. roll out left, chunks it to Krizziak, skies high for the catch, brings it down past the first down marker. It's going to be a first down for Argyle as Krizziak gains uh, about 10 on the catch before he's brought down by Kaz Murphy, the 6'2 senior for Ditton. Yeah, Krizziak, you're right. He went up high on that one, made a great catch because he knew he was going to get whacked when he caught it. Gasperson claps, hands off to Krekler up the middle, now outside the left hash mark and down across the 40. And brought down by Kaufman. And that's going to set up a second and short. And, you know, these second twos, second and ones, you may see a shot here. As it's a screen out to Krizziak. Krizziak makes a man miss, pass the first down marker, approaches midfield, shoved out of bounds at the 48. Again, that's Murphy on the tackle. You know, Kaz Murphy's drawn the short straw. He's got he's to guard Will Krizziak all night, first down for Argyle. Yeah, and that's not fun, right? And, and the Argyle receivers are also very good after the catch, and that's what he's going to have to deal with. 8.15 on the clock. Argyle with a first down at their own 48. Gasperson scrambles around and drug down from behind. This will count as a sack. That's Jacob Kaufman who's been active tonight from the linebacker spot. And he's got the first Denton sack tonight, and that pushes Argyle back to second and 11 as he reach the eight-minute mark of the opening quarter. Yeah, just not really clicking right now on offense. This should be a free play, and it is. Gasperson looking deep to Hodson on the comeback now. Hodson catches it at the first down stick and runs out of bounds at the Denton 40. So this free play will, will be declined. 
Yeah, you like to see him just continue that route deep, right? I mean, you already you know you got the five yard penalty. Outside, number 58 defense. That penalty will be declined. First down. That's Hodson's first catch. As Argyle is back into Denton territory for just joining us. Argyle was on the move on their first drive, but an interception halted things. Didn't unable to score, and here we are, 0-0, 740 remaining in the first quarter. Argyle's first and 10 from the 42. Handed off to Jake Crickler. He's brought down by Braylon Young, the sophomore on the Broncos. And it will be second and three from the 35. Argyle running fast. Gasperson claps to Crickler again. Past the first down stick. No, drag back. What strong uh, tackle there for Denton. And that's uh, Marlon Ferguson who got a hold of uh, Crickler and didn't let go. No, he just kind of grabbed him and pulled him back. That was a show of strength right there by Marlon Ferguson. Got to assume it's four down territory here as it's yeah. third and one from the Denton 33. Gasperson claps. This could be another free play. We don't see a flag yet, but Gasperson throws deep out to Krizziak who drops it. That is very uncharacteristic for Will Krizziak who's frustrated with himself. And yeah. like we mentioned, it's fourth and one and no hesitation, Argyle will go for it. No, and they knew they would be going for it on fourth down anyway. That's why they threw down the field right there. I think they, maybe Gasperson didn't know if he got the free play or not. But either way, fourth and one. And they hand off to Crickler, fakes to his left, now runs right to the 30, past the first down marker, and it will be a first down. As he runs into a couple Broncos, uh, and Marlon Ferguson in there for the tackle again as well. As it is first and 10, Argyle from the 36-40 remaining in this first quarter. Argyle's second possession of this ball game. Gasperson claps. Kreckler again, third straight carry up the middle. Bounces out right now. And barrels 40, takes on three Broncos near the first down market. These going to be a little short. Drag down at the 21. That's Orion Croker, sophomore for the Broncos on the tackle. And Mitch, you love this. Another second and short. Yeah, and it looks like Argyle's O-line's kind of having their way with the uh, Broncos. Look at them. They got their hands on their knees. They got one knee on the ground. We'll go to Clark and find out. Yeah, Clark, keep an eye if, if Denton is some of their, their defensive linemen. I don't think they are. Oh, Crocker now hole. bounces out, sweep to the right, and cuts back, makes a man miss, past the 20. It'll be a first down for Argyle as he's drugged down near the Denton 17. On the tackle for the Broncos is Devontae Burnett, a junior linebacker. Boy, it sure looked like a hold right there. I, I couldn't tell who it was from Argyle, but you saw the white shirt get stretched out. No flag. Another first down for Argyle, and this will be a false start. <laughs> will Hodson try to get going a little bit too quickly, but. Uh, false start, number five, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Clark, I want to bring you in. Uh, it did, doesn't look like Denton's defensive line is subbing, and we got a lot of hands on hips. Uh, are you seeing a tired Broncos defensive line right now? Oh, absolutely. And it's they're not really taking on the blocks. You know, they're not trying to neutralize their blocker and then look for the ball. They're shooting the gaps. Every once in a while, they're going to get through and make a good play, but for the most part, they're going to run right by the ball. Gasperson on first and 15, a new running back in for Argyle. It's Preston Slayton, and his carry goes up the middle, and we'll get a lot of that yardage back before brought down by Burnett again on the tackle, but that gain all the way up to the Denton 12, so a gain of 10 for Slayton on his first carry. As it will be Slayton again up the middle. Now tries to bounce out left, but brought down by a couple Broncos. As Braylon Young in there, as well as Marlon Ferguson. As it's going to be third and about two and a half for Argyle. Yeah, it looks like they're going to keep their foot on the gas. I would. I wouldn't give them a second to do anything right here because you can tell they're gassed. Their best D lineman just went out of the game. Leighton Firestone is getting some coaching, and in for him is Chance and Bowen at left <laughs> guard. We're going to have another free play as Ditton jumps offside. It's going to be the fade to Will Hodson in the right corner of the end zone. That ball is overthrown, but it was a free play, so Argyle should get a first down out of this. That was that was pretty comical because he was he was coming hard, saw it, and tried to turn sideways. Outside. Defense number one, <laughs> five-yard penalty. First down. I believe that's the third first down Argyle's received due to uh, – Due to an offsides penalty by Denton, and this what this puts Argyle on the doorstep as they have first and goal from the Denton five. 4.30 remaining in this first quarter. Kreckler up the middle, jukes to his left, oh, and drops out. the ball. Ball is squirming around in the end zone, and I believe the Broncos got on it, and they did. A touchback for Denton as Argyle's first two possessions end in turnover as the second one 
Crickler was mere inches away from the goal line. Clark, you were you were there. He was pretty close to breaking the plane, wasn't he? Yeah, that was that was a very close call. It looked to me like he was in the end zone before it came out. Yeah, this this uh, line judge over here, neither one of them are going to make that call. I can tell by looking at it. <laughs> they were looking at each other, yeah. going, "What'd you see?" <laughs> I mean, you you got to you got to have the guts to stand up and make a big call every once in a while if you see it. And, um, not everybody can do it. So Kreckler with the fumble and Croker for Denton with the recovery. The recovery was in the end zone, so Denton will start this possession at their own 20 with 432 remaining in this first quarter. We're still scoreless. As a carry off tackle left is Robinson again. Denton's run four plays and it's been four carries to Robinson. Nathaniel Bruce there on the tackle. Robinson gains a couple, will be second and seven. We're Denton. Yeah, those uh, those turnovers is what gets you in every game, right? And especially if you think you've got a, a team on the ropes, it really hurts. Of course, they all hurt when you get down towards the goal line like that, but um, Argyle will certainly address that at halftime, that's for sure. Second and three, Floyd, the quarterback for Denton, pitches out to Robinson, and that's Jack Teller on stop for Argyle. This one behind the line of scrimmage. She'll give uh, Jack Teller credit for a TFL. And that puts Denton in third and long. It's going to be third and ten for the Broncos. Yeah, Taylor looked like he was almost unblocked right there. Once they pitched it, he was on top of the runner and uh, got him for a loss. Now Argyle has put them in a tough position, third and long. You know, that's tough to do is Jack Taylor, 6'4", 240. You know, kind of a little undersized for a defensive lineman. Those kind of tosses are not going to work against agile defensive linemen like that. No, especially the slow toss, right? As it's a handoff now, a jet sweep out to the short side of the field as Keyshawn uh -oh. Diego is thrown out of bounds by Devin Owen. And we may have a flag on the sideline. Did two, did two of them throw their flag? And this Clark is telling us that this could be a late hit. We'll open up the referee microphone and see what yeah, that's, that's chapter not, has to say. That's not good because you had him on fourth down. Personal foul, late hit, defense, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. So didn't get a number there, but it will be a first down for Denton. The way up to their own 35, but yeah, like you said, you had them stopped. They were, you know, given where they were punting and, and viewing how they had the first punt went, you probably could have gotten the ball in their territory, but all in all, Denton has the ball at their own 35, first down run. You get more than half as it's Robinson Again, Justice Jones on the tackle, but Robinson, a lot of work here in this, er, you know, early on in this game. As he's up to the 41, again a six, it'll be second and four for Ditton. Yeah, it doesn't look, I don't know if they're trying to bait Argyle into getting lazy on a pass because they, they hadn't really thrown one. No, it's been five Robinson carries and a jet sweep. Here's number six of carry for Robinson. He barrels ahead for two before Devin Owen is there to bring him down. It's another third down for this Denton offense. Yeah, Argyle's doing a good job. I mean, they, they kind of gave up some yardage on that first down play where they got five, I guess, maybe even six, and Argyle's held them enough from the last two. But So right here, you got to really bow up. You, you want them to kick this ball from here. Austin Floyd in the shotgun formation, one receiver left two to the right, and another handoff for Robinson. Go. Argyle defense is prepared for this carry. Jack Teller's in there, as well as Logan Gregory. No gain. It will be fourth and about two. Did see some bodies change. I believe this will be a punt by Denton. You would think so. I think, the, I think Lawson Floyd's coming back out. Maybe they just sent in their big package, so. Looks like Denton's gonna go for this fourth and two from their own 43, 144. Remaining in this first quarter, we are scoreless. Hard count. Floyd now under center, unbalanced line to the right. Hard they count. could be trying to draw Argyle off sides yeah. here. There's one second on the play clock <laughs> and then a timeout by Denton. Let's take a quick timeout while we have a, have a minute. 130 on the clock in the first quarter. We are still scoreless. This is Eagle Football brought to you by the Argyle Eagles Easter Club. What's the secret to scoring big in the real estate game? 
put the ball in the hands of the winning realtor in Argyle, Lorena Moore with Monument Realty. Lorena knows all of the plays to find the perfect match for you, whether you're buying or selling. Real estate is about connections, and there's no better quarterback in Argyle than Lorena Moore. Find her at dfwmorehomes.com or look for her QR code around Eagle Stadium. Don't get stuck on the sidelines. Go with Lorena Moore with Monument Realty. For exceptional lawn care, call Evergreen Lawn and Landscape. We're a family-owned business serving Argyle for more than 30 years. Our services include lawn maintenance, fertilization, sod installation, and landscaping. Our service techs and support staff are fully trained and work hard to make your lawn the best it can be. Contact them today at evergreenlls.com. That's Evergreen Lawn and Landscaping at evergreenlls.com. Let us love your lawn as much as you do at evergreenlls.com. We are back in action as uh, both teams have lined up to punt, but I think, uh, and Clark, yell at me if I'm wrong here, but Argyle may have had too many men on the field or not enough, but Argyle has to call a timeout, so we'll re-rack this situation. As Mitch, while we have second, let's uh, thank some of our first quarter sponsors. Yeah, the first quarter made possible by the generous support of Dree's Custom Homes, Connie Johnson at A-Town Apparel, Lamar National Bank, Core Culture Studio, Lorena Moore at Monument Realty, Net Profit Advisors, Emily Holt at Argyle Party and Gift, J.B. Warranties, Argyle United Methodist Church, J. Caldwell Custom Pools, Orthopedic Associates of Flower Mound, Longhorn Screen Shades and Shutters, Amy Cook, The Legacy Group, and the sponsor of our pregame show, Billy Klein with YourNewDoor.com. All right, thank you to those wonderful sponsors as uh, both teams finally back on the field, and it will be a dit and punt here on fourth and two from their own 43. Much better looking punt, but it's straight to Nathaniel Bruce at his own 27. Across the 40, along the left side, Argyle set up a wall. Bruce across the 40 and brought down by a Bronco, but not until he gets into Denton territory. That tackle by Brian McMod. And a 37-yard punt return by Nathaniel Bruce sets up Argyle in wonderful territory, but Mitch, it's not moving the ball. That's been the issue for Argyle. It's been hanging on to it. Yeah, they've, they've done a great job of going up and down the field. And they really hadn't had to do much to do it, right? It's been basically on the ground, mixing a few bubble screens or something, and uh, they just got to figure out how they can protect it and get in the end zone. Roberts, Firestone, Wilson, Johansson, and Cheney along the front five. Gasperson in the shotgun formation. He's got Lane Stewart in the backfield and Kreckler. He hands it to Kreckler, jukes a man out of his shoes, jukes another man, and out to the left boundary and brought down at the 22 by Kaz Murphy. Nifty moves by Jake there. Yeah, great moves, but it looked like he barely got it. Did you see the handoff? Yeah, it was. <laughs> I think it was on his shoulder pad when he took off with it. Another two running back set with Stewart to Gasperson's left and Kreckler to his right. Handoff Kreckler again, it's the same play, but uh, not as much success as there on the tackle was Braylon Madison. And Madison got his big paws on Kreckler, and Jake did not get anywhere after that. He was standing in the hole waiting. I mean, there was there was not even a hole because that dude was right there in the middle of it. Casper claps. Kreckler again. It's the same play. Up the gut. This one has success. Jukes to the left, down to the four. And finally down to about the two is Jake Kreckler. Braylon Young on the tackle, but Jake Kreckler. Some nifty moves after receiving the ball, but right, Mitch, you're right. The handoff has been a little suspect here. As Gasperson again, Kreckler, fourth time in a row. Kreckler close and in for Argyle's first touchdown. Wow. And that was quick, right? I mean, Argyle, you know, had some good field position, but guys, they, where they handed off four times in the end zone, they go. Yeah, good field position set up by Nathaniel Bruce, and then four straight Jake Kreckler carries. And Argyle is in the end zone for the first time tonight. Is on for the PAT is Anthony Rubalcabra. Anthony's PAT is up and good. So a 7-0 lead for Argyle. 23 seconds remain in this first quarter. And we'll be back after this word from the Real Estate Station. The real estate station owned by longtime Argyle residents Dave and Kathy Salisbury has been around since 1986 and was the first real estate office to be established in Argyle. The real estate station provides full office support and house marketing and an experienced sales team consisting of agents who live in and know the Argyle area. Whether you are buying, selling, or leasing, 
sink, they are ready to serve you. Supporting Argyle ISD for over 15 years, they are proud to be a district-level Eagle partner again this year. And they were chosen to be Argyle ISD's real estate advisors. The Real Estate Station, they are your hometown real estate experts. Updating your home is too important to do alone. The Design House of Denton has designers and experts on staff who want to help. Whether it's simply new flooring or having an entire wing of your home remodeled, the Design House has a full spectrum of services for any size idea you have. They care about you and your home both during and after your project. My wife and I know this from personal experience. Now it's time to see for yourself. Go see the friendly staff at their gorgeous showroom located just outside Golden Triangle Mall at 2303 Colorado Boulevard. The Design House of Denton, locally owned and proud members of Argyle Eagle Nation. Kickoff is fielded at the 15 by Denton and ducks out of bounds at the 27. He was he was looking for that spot on the sideline to jump out. <laughs> he already had his mind made up. And Keyshawn Diego didn't want uh, any part of that hit and yeah. is it uh, is 7-0, 20 seconds uh, remaining in this first quarter. And Clark, you know, we talked about it in the pregame how this could be a little bit of a trap game and uh, you didn't get the sense of that on the sideline, but two Argyle turnovers uh, may have made it look like that. Uh, what's, the, what's the sense down there right now? Well, they're a little bit more confidence. I think that they're kind of chalking that up to, uh, man, what have we ever turned the ball over two times? So I think they, I see there, there's a difference in the way Gasperson's handling himself and definitely the way that uh, Crackler is holding onto the football while he's running. Robinson with the toss left. He runs into Max Bland, and you're not going to you're not gonna get very many yards when he runs straight into Max Bland as uh, it's going to be a gain of about one after the sophomore linebacker brings down uh, LaMarcus Robinson. On the little underhanded toss sweep. Yeah, yeah they've run that a couple times. As that's that's going to do it for the first quarter. As uh, After your first 12 minutes, Argyle leading Denton Broncos 7-0. Uh, we'll be back after this uh, timeout and a word from Argyle Methodist Church. Hello fellow Eagles fans, this is Pastor Jen at Argyle United Methodist Church. If you're looking for a church family, I want to invite you to join us for church on Sunday at 9 a.m. for our traditional service or at 11 a.m. for our modern service. We also have small groups for the entire family, all ages, at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you there. Hey, this is George Dunham reminding you to check out the Eagles Nest podcast every Thursday to get you ready for Argyle football's next game. With segments like the scouting report on Argyle's next opponent, the player spotlight, the weekly flyover with Coach Rogers, highlights from last week's action, and the Argyle ISD Eagle update. Blake Jones and his crew promise to inform and entertain you on everything Argyle Eagles. Check them out and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Argyle leads 7-0 after the first quarter. It is uh, Denton's football at the their own 29, facing a second and nine. Oh, it's a pass. As, uh, the first pass of the ball game is complete. A little comeback route just across the 30, as it is Sam Chandler brought down by Xavier Sanchez. And uh, didn't look too bad there, Mitch, for your first pass. Uh, no. I mean, uh, yeah, typically obviously, you, you they, don't you don't pass until the second quarter. It's because you don't want to pass, but you know they look pretty good there. Yeah, I mean they didn't want to take a big chunk down the field. They wanted to do it, you know, just ease their way into the passing game. They did a good job of it. And now they got third and pretty sizable numbers, though. They they probably would like to be a little bit further down the field. Third and eight for Denton Floyd back in shotgun fakes to Robinson and pass uh -oh. up the seam is caught and a gain of 19 before Xavier Sanchez. And bring down the ball carrier. He's on the catch is Dontrell Blaylock, the junior wide receiver. That play action uh, opened up the seam, and Blaylock found the soft spot. A nice pass and delivery there by Floyd. Yeah, they caught Argyle in a blitz, and uh, QB picked it up, made a good pass. Austin Floyd, quarterback for the Broncos. Back with the snap, hands off to Robinson up the middle. Robinson barreling in the couple different Eagles, bounces off the tackles, and finally drug down after a gain of seven. So that's Luke Lane on the tackle. But a good run there by Marcus Robinson, the six foot one senior, 205 pounds, so definitely looks the part there in the backfield for the Broncos. Yeah, they put together two good plays right there. They had the passing play, then they had the running play, and Argyle has just kind of had a brief lapse 
of something. They gotta, they gotta figure out how to stop it. Second and three at the Argyle 43. It's gonna be Robinson again up the middle. Fakes left, now drives up to the right, now past the right hash mark and brought down past the first down marker as it's Luke Lane in on the tackle again. But Mitch, if this is, uh, is it, if this is the game script, Robinson's gonna have a ton of carries tonight. Yeah, he's gonna have a ton of carries and he's gonna need some serious ice bath when he gets yeah. through with this game. He's taking some big hits. Even the ones that he bounces off from, he's getting hit pretty hard. Look, he's got his hands on his hips. Not really sure what's behind him in the depth chart, but I'm guessing he's far and away better than whoever's behind him. Robinson to Floyd's left. Floyd in the shotgun, claps. Another handoff to Robinson, up the middle. Acted like he wanted to run left, now cuts back to his right, stays along the right hash mark and is, draw, is dragged down after a gain of four. As that is John Hurt on the tackle for Argyle. And you know, Mitch and Clark, if you guys remember, it was Coco Brown the Broncos running back last year yeah. got a ton of carries, and uh, he's now at Sam Houston State. Good and, player. Uh, yeah, he was a really good player, so maybe they just kept the same game plan. Now it's a play action to Robinson, and Floyd fires out to the right. That ball is caught at the Argyle 30. It's Cooper Slayton on the tackle, and on the reception is Keyshawn Diego, and we'll give Ditton a third and two here on the Argyle 30. Yeah, and um, they're doing a pretty good job throwing the ball, right? They're, they're taking the easy shots, but you wonder if they're doing that to give the running back a little bit of a break. Well, and you know, these passes are coming off of play action. Yep. So you, you want to you know, establish a run and it'll open up some some of the pockets uh, that you can throw to. And it's, it certainly worked for the Broncos here on this drive. 9.30 remaining in the first half, 7-0 Argyle. Broncos are driving. Robinson on the carry, off tackle right, but he is bottled up. And a few different, that's six Argyle Eagles on the pile. It's Max Bland in there, and uh, Logan Gregory, Hudson and Materios in there. They all gang tackle Robinson before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. And it will be a fourth and two for Denton. Yep. And no sub, so it looks like the Broncos are gonna go for it. What do you do, uh, beat the big man? Yeah, I think you do. This is the same unbalanced line where they try to draw, draw Argyle offside, but they call it play here. And up the middle, it's a backup running back, Jacoby Gladney. Gladney across the first down line, down to the 15. It'll be a first down for Ditton. Yeah, a little bit quicker there. Maybe uh, maybe he got the block, you know, from uh, Jacoby. Or uh, who was the uh, the big guy there? Um, Robinson. Robinson, I think, led the way with the block as they had the, uh, Gladney as tailback. And um, had some room there. Bud Petter. On the tackle, that's Petter's first tackle here on senior night at Eagle Stadium. First and 10 for Ditton. It's Robinson again up the middle, runs into Hickman, and Hickman and Robinson both fall forward down to about the 23, 24 yard line. Yeah, Coach Rogers gonna be sorry to see this is the last Petter come through. Yeah. Because they've had some great kids that came through and they were great football players on top of that. Uh-oh. Clark tells us he's standing probably next to Chase down there. Second and eight for Denton. Floyd, with, after the play action, has been rushed by Hickman. He throws it out, and uh, Mitch, I don't know if he was outside the tackle box. And we'll see the refs come together and discuss an intentional grounding here as Floyd was uh, under deep pressure by Brendan Hickman, and Floyd just had to get rid of it. Okay, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? I mean, it's just a seems that they're way, not going to call I it. Don't. And here comes the flag, and yeah, it's going to oh, be a yeah. yeah. we'll Get the call from the referee. Intentional grounder. Offense number five. The penalty will be enforced at the spot. Loss of down. Clark, you had a pretty good view of it. Was it, did the ball not reach the line of scrimmage or was he still in the tackle box? Well, both. He, he was inside the tackle box, the ball was three yards behind the line of scrimmage and the receiver had run a fly pattern so he wasn't in the same zip code. So it was a good call. Oh, he, he had all of them. Well, he held on the ball way too long, right? So he stood in the pocket, nothing was happening and he took off backwards, which is when he really got in trouble, just had to get rid of it. Third and 22 for this Broncos offense that's been heavily reliant on the run. Gonna have to hit the air here, but it looks like we have a timeout called by Argyle, I believe. Argyle. Well, while we figure it out, let's let's get to our second quarter sponsors 
here, Mitch, and uh, who's bringing us this second quarter? The yeah, second quarter is made possible by the generous support of Ty and Jennifer Homeyer at the Design House. Cycle Center of Denton, Glass and Mirror Specialist, Wes and Lisa Spence at Waxahachie Autoplex, Dara Hawk, Chris Martin and Gus and Michelle Sanchez at Post Oak Realty, Marge Bunn at Snooty Pig, who we saw this morning. Point Blank, Brian, point bank. Michelle Stone. That's a bank. What did I say? Point Blank. <laughs> Maybe that's a better name, though, isn't it? <laughs> it could be. Well, not if you're a bank. I think you want to be identified as a bank. Third and 22 oh, after the timeout. Up. Floyd back to pass out in the left flat. And it is Sanchez on the tackle as the Denton Bronco was hammered as soon as he caught the ball. On the reception is Jackson Higgins, the senior tied in. Nowhere to go after the catch. Oh, they didn't even gain a yard, so it'll be fourth and 22 for this Broncos offense. Yeah, That this seemed is, to be rolling before the intentional grounding. Yeah, and this is kind of a weird situation for them, right? They're on the 37-yard line, and they're going to have to punt. Clark says it's uh, it's end of the win, which actually might help them here. <laughs> See if this, uh, maybe they can roll one down inside the five, but you, know, you feel good if, if you're an Argyle fan. Nathaniel Bruce is back there. He's not afraid to catch anything in the He's air, not, football or awesome. baseball. He's awesome back there. As a punt, what another the short world? roller. <laughs> it hits at the, at the first down marker and rolls inside. And uh, Clark is right. That's gonna, He's going to get a, a punt inside the 20. And credit for a punt inside the 20 is this Argyle possession will begin at the 19. Did, you, did we finish all of our nope, sponsors? No, we didn't. We got a couple more. Uh, let me see where I was. After Point Blank. Point Blank. <laughs> and then Point Bank also is a sponsor. Brian and Shelly Stone at Shout Out Promotions. Doc, Dr. David Dyer, Argyle Orthodontics, had a couple of our kids. Joe Bartram of NXT Mortgage, powered by U Mortgage. Shelby Black at Salon 377, Sonic of Argyle. Kelly Massey at Grit Productions. We'll get those, the rest of them here momentarily. It's Kreckler up the middle and a really patient run by Kreckler gains six. Go ahead, Mitch. Fairway Independent Mortgage. And the sponsor of the halftime show is Brian McCarty at 407 Barbecue. All right, thank you, sponsors. Tiberian and Ray on the tackle for Ditton, but not before Kreckler gains six. It's second and four for Argyle. 640 remaining in this first half. Argyle with a 7-0 lead. Kreckler makes a man miss. He's into the secondary. Now to midfield, across the Eagle logo, out to the right hash, and he's going to outrun these Broncos. 20, 10, 5, and into the end zone, Jake Kreckler. Wow. A 75-yard touchdown run for Jake on senior night. Wow, and he showed some really good wheels right there, right? He just ran past a couple of guys in the secondary, but then once he got to about the 30-yard 30 yard line. It was just a sprint to the end zone, and he had just enough to get in. As Bronco is down as the Denton medical staff will attend to him as he's laying about the 20. As, uh, yeah, Kreckler shows his feet. You know, he made that initial safety miss, and then he thought, ah, yeah, he could be he dragged down after maybe a gain of 10 or 12 or so. And he just outran the Broncos secondary, and really turned on the Jets around the 50 yard line, and. Yeah, did that's a good. Jake's longest run of the season. That, that's a long run, right? And he did a good job of putting the ball in the other hand. And it's funny because they keep looking back, waiting to see who they're going to stiff arm. You know, if they, keep, they right. run up to him. But he held his speed, man. Made it all the way to the end. That was a great run. Bronco was Tavarian Ray. He's up and walking uh, to his own sideline under his own power. So 6:30 remaining. Anthony Rubel Cabra. See if he can make this a 14-0 game for Argyle. You love to see the seniors have a big game on senior night, right? For sure, it's, yeah. just, it's fitting. And you know what? It's always good to get a big lead, and you get some of the guys that aren't necessarily starters in the game, and they all get to play at home. Bobber's kick is up and good. 14-0 Argyle with the lead. 6.30 remaining in the second quarter. This is Eagle football, and it's brought to you by the Argyle Eagles Mr. Club. This is Rebel and Stacy Mickenheim. Our family owns Charred Pool and Patio right here in Argyle. As our town grows, our company continues to value community and hometown pride. We want to know your name and hear about your kids. Charred is a family owned and operated pool company devoted to customer service and complete customer satisfaction. We specialize in new pool design and pool renovation. Ready to get started on your backyard oasis? Contact Charred Pool and Patio today. Hey Argyle folks, get 100% employee pricing on a new Ford, Dodge, Jeep, or Nissan 
at Waxahachie Autoplex. Owners Wes and Lisa Spence are proud parents of Argyle State Champion Blake Spence, now at Texas Tech. Wes doesn't play games with the sales staff. In fact, he'll deliver the car and sign the paperwork on your kitchen table. Tell Wes you heard about it from us. Great selection, service, and price. That's what Waxahachie Autoplex is all about. Back here at Eagle Stadium, 6.30 remaining in the second quarter. Argyle with a 14-zip lead over the Ditton Broncos here in this district <laughs> battle as Argyle atop the district with a 4-0 record. As these Ditton Broncos are 3-1, tied for second place as the uh, kickoff goes into the end zone for a touchback. And By Mitch, one yard. Did you see it? Yeah, it had one a, yard, and then it checked up and stayed right there. And it had a little backspin. That was almost oh, yeah. dangerous for the Broncos. But, Mitch, we saw a pretty uh, – surprising game in district last week as you know we thought Emerson uh, th this game here at Eagle Stadium between Argyle and Emerson was for the district title and you know whoever lost that game would get second but Emerson loses in surprising fashion on a Thursday night to Lake Dallas I don't know what's going on there so that puts Emerson in third in third and where's Lake Dallas is fourth no uh, Lake yeah. Dallas is tied for second with uh, with these oh, yeah, Broncos yeah, yeah. at three and one they're so Emerson is really fourth right yeah right right Robinson on the carry up to the 27. That is a shock because uh, Emerson's a good team. They got a lot of talent all over that team, but sometimes it's it's not the talent you got. It's if they can play together. Maybe that's the issue they're having. I don't really know what what would keep them from doing better, but um, I would hate to be a one seed and draw them as a four seed in the oh, first round of the playoffs. Yeah, Emerson uh, yet to play Denton, so seedings may change. Yeah, for sure. Maybe Emerson does finish third. Robinson on another carry. He's runs into the entire Argyle defensive line. It's Hickman in on the stop as well as Materio. Hurt. A good name for a defensive lineman, John Hurt. So it's going to be another third and long. As uh, I don't know if you saw any of that game, Mitch, but Lake Dallas needed an onside kick late in that one, and they got it after one of their players jumped out of bounds and hit the ball back in bounds to recover the onside kick. It was quite a play. Can you do that? Yeah. He jumped in bounds and yeah, oh, yeah. back in bounds. So it was a really nice play by Falcon uh, to, to uh, secure that win. 5-10. Remaining in this first half, Argyle on top by 14. Oh, Ditton with no. a third long at a screen set up. And out to the right wow. side to Diego. Who Thought he had it? a lot of room on the outside, but Hudson Immaterio closes that green in a hurry. Clark, he came from out of nowhere, did Immaterio. Yeah, he did. He was he was kind of playing the middle zone right there in the outside flat, but not that far out. And he did a really great job of getting out there and taking taking away the cut as the uh, as the edge hog was coming up from the other sideline. Yeah, and he, he put a lick on him too. They had a great play call there because Argyle was in a blitz and QB waited, waited, and then dumped it off. And that's why I said, oh, no, because it looked like he had a ton of room out ahead of him. Yeah, but that's typically what you go to, right? If the defensive line is in the backfield yep. uh, repeatedly, you want to hit him with a screen. You did, but the linebackers covered up for it there in Immaterial, so didn't want to punt what again. This one is, uh, based on Mitch's reaction, not a good one, and it's not, as uh, this punt will only go about. It was barely a first down. Yeah, punt will go about 13 yards, and Argyle will begin in Broncos territory. Okay, so Clark, explain to me. I know they don't have a world-class punter on their team, but why don't they work at it more in practice? Why do why do these teams just ignore the third phase of a football game? I don't get it. Uh, you know, I don't either, because the special teams is where you can really turn a game oh, around in a yeah. hurry. It's it's a third of the game. Yeah, and this is this is exceptionally not good. Argyle will begin at the Denton 38. Fake to Crickler and a handoff on an end around to Lane Stewart. <laughs> Stewart with speed along the left side, up the left sideline. He's going past all the Broncos and into the end zone. Look at, look at that track speed by Lane Stewart into the end zone as Argyle all the board. Lane Stewart on senior night. Yeah, and as he came around, he had Tyler Roberts standing there waiting to give him a block if somebody was chasing him. And the, uh, the Denton defender just ran around. <laughs> he didn't want to take on that block, but. Man, he turned on the speed on that sideline and just blew everybody away. But now think back to Denton's third down play where it looks like they have a lot of room, right? Immaterio closes it in a hurry. Lane Stewart just ran by every Denton Bronco, and they looked like they were stuck in mud yeah. compared to Lane Stewart's speed. 
Point PAT is up and good. Argyle now in control. They lead things 21-0 with 4.09 remaining in this first half. This is Eagle Football brought to you by the Argyle Eagles Booster Club. JB Warranties is a local family-owned business based out of Argyle, Texas. They work with thousands of contractors nationwide to offer part and labor warranties on heating and air conditioning equipment. Came to Inc. 5000's Best Places to Work list in 2018, 20, and 21, they're looking to add members to their team. If interested, please send a resume to hr at jbwarranties.com or call 855-742-5522. JB Warranties is a proud sponsor of Argyle Athletics. This year, as our Argyle Eagles continue to build on their legacy of success, our Papa John's family is here to help you step up your pizza game. The North Lake Papa John's is your locally owned and operated pizza shop right here in your backyard. Step up your dinner plans this week with any of our specialty pizzas, papadillas, wings, and desserts. And this season, get 25% off your order when you use the coupon code ARGYLE24. It's the perfect way to celebrate an Argyle victory tonight. Enjoy the game and go Eagles! Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Senior night here at Argyle High School now sees the Eagles in control. As with four minutes remaining in this first half, Argyle with a 21 0 lead over the Denton Broncos and an easy drive summary there, Mitch. One play. What, 38 yards? One play, 38 yards. So they've had two one play drives, right? 75 yeah. yards before that? Yeah, yeah, 14 points on two plays in the last two plays for Argyle. And you know what was unusual about that sweep was how slow developing it was, right? I mean, they faked the dive play and then, you know, they pitched it to him coming around and uh, the Denton Broncos just didn't uh, didn't keep their uh, defensive end in place over there and just ran right past him. So, Denton will take over at their own 25. Throwing here, and Lawson threw that a little early. Tried to put some air under it, but overthrew the intended target. It was Keyshawn Diego, and that's an incomplete pass on first down. So, Mitch, you see the disparity in the two offenses. Argyle routinely getting in second and third and short. Denton, it just seems like they've got a mile to go on every second and third down. Yeah, and, and I'm not really sure that I would have started out with a pass like that on first down unless they thought that they could get something over on Argyle because now here they are behind the chains even at second down. Second and 10, a counter to Gladney. It's the second carry of the game. This bounced out right. Nice run by Gladney as he approaches the first down mark. And on the tackle for Argyle is Luke Lane. But, you know, Mitch, if... Kind of be a run first offense that requires you to get in second and third manageable. Now the good second play down yep. did get them in third manageable, but you really hate seeing second and ten. Yeah, it glad he looks like a running back, man. That guy, he's got some wheels. It's bottled up here as it appeared to be about it appeared to be the same play, that same counter. He cut back up the middle and ran straight into Bud Petter. And that's going to set Denton up for a fourth and short in their own territory. You might as well go. And I was about to say, you know. The, What's the difference, 10 yards? Given your punt game, you might as well just try to see if you can barrel ahead for a yard. Yeah. And uh, they did get uh, a first down on their last fourth down attempt. Now they yeah, had they Robinson go. in at fullback and Gladney at running back, and they're doing the same thing wow. here. Look how deep Floyd he under is. center. Hands off to Gladney, off tackle right. He's hitting the backfield, but recovers and stumbles short. ahead to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be close. I think they're parking him short. What? I think one line judge has him short. The other is waving first down. So it's going to be a first down for the Broncos. Uh, I don't know about that. So Clark, three. did he get it? Come to me, Clark. Well, they moved the chains. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Clark is very results oriented. Three minutes to go in this first half. Denton's got to get a got to get a move on if they want to score before the first half horn. Floyd and the shotgun hands to Robinson. And Argyle, Argyle has made their adjustments to stop this run game as it's Hickman in the backfield, Tyson O'Neill in the backfield. They team up to take down Robinson at the line of scrimmage. And now they're going to move him back for yards. So credit both of those boys for a tackle for loss. It'll be Mitch again, second and 11. Yeah, so uh, you throw here. I mean, they yeah. threw on first down the first first down of the drive. So you're also you throw looking, on second now. You're looking at the clock here, too. You have 210 remaining in the first half. You know, I, Clark alerts us that you know, 
could do a back-to-back -back here. One. Yeah, two for one as they get the ball after halftime. Floyd throwing off his back foot, and ball sails out of bounds, but a dangerous throw there by the senior Lawson Floyd. Pretty good arm. Sets up for third and 11. And, yeah, I want to go down to Clark. You know, we've... We've heard on the ref mic this wind and uh, see some flags moving. Well, what's the wind like down there? Well, the wind is su it's substantial enough to hold a ball in the air longer uh, and push it a little bit, but that that ball was pretty far out of bounds. I think we saw it mess with a, one of the Denton Broncos punts as well, so keep an eye on this wind as Denton is going against it. And back to pass, Floyd is... He got smacked. Ball is incomplete as Justice Jones hammered him as he threw. And Justice may have tipped that ball. And it's going to be an incomplete pass. And Ditton will have to punt here on fourth and 11. Yeah, and he just blitzed off the edge right there. Just ran right straight at him. And it was, Orgal dialed it up and it worked. This is my uh, favorite play of the game for Ditton. Okay, over and under. Does he kick it to the first down marker? Okay. Into the he's, wind. He's trying. He, is he's he? punting against a stiff wind, and it, that's, this doesn't help. A low roller punt, and he that's got a punt. That's a good off. one. That's a really good punt. As it's going to be uh, across the Argyle 40. And they're going to spot it at 39. So He fielded oh, the ground ball. Got a 31-yard 31, 31 punt there. Let's give him some credit. As Argyle will take over with 153. This possession will begin at their own 39. So I'd like to see this Argyle offense Maybe not for this game, but work on it, right? You want to work on your two-minute drill. Yeah, this would be a great place to do it. You're right. This is probably what they'll do. I mean, you know, they're not trying to run the score up here. They're just trying to, like you said, plan for the playoffs and uh, see what they can do with not much time. 39, Gasperson in the shotgun. Looking left, fires left, out to Will Hobson, who drops it again. Yeah, there was really no pressure on there. Will's sure-handed guy. We said it could have been the sun the first time around. I think the sun set. Yeah, that's not it. By now, as here at Argyle, there was a, a threat of rain tonight. That's why the kick got moved up an hour. But it just we see some overcast skies and a, and a cool, windy breeze tonight here in Argyle. Crickler is nearly brought down in the backfield, but somehow escapes and runs out left and is brought down after a yard. Braylon Madison drug him down, but second effort gets Argyle a yard, and it'll be third and nine with 90 seconds remaining in this first half. Yeah, keep the feet moving, right? That's what he's got to do, and that's what he did just to get that one yard. Third and nine from the 40. Gasperson rolls out right. Oh. Trot fires to the sideline. Ball is caught. Was he inbounds? No. Oh, he had the first down right here, too, if he throws it short. Lane Stewart caught the pass at about the 50. Would have been good for a first down, but uh, line judge rules him out of bounds. And it's a three and out for Argyle. Yeah, Kreckler was wide open in the flat. He threw over his head. But if he dumped it off to him, he had a first down and probably more. But you know what? That comes when you have a, a quarterback that hadn't played it all year, right? It, the play calls for not to throw it to him. And so uh, you got to learn. You, know, you can dump those off and still get yards. Diego back to receive this punt for Argyle, and it deflects off of him. He's got to get on top of it, and he does. Back at the Argyle 16. This will be a 46-yard punt for Argyle. And backs didn't back, and with 108, I don't know if you knee it, but I, I don't know if Ditton tries to air it out here. <laughs> a couple running plays, right? Yeah, you see if maybe you can break Regroup. one. Maybe. Senior not here at Eagle Stadium. Had a lot of seniors to get through. 79. In the pregame, 79. And that's just for these fall sports, right? Right. Right, no basketball, no golf, no tennis, no... Uh, no student body. Baseball, right. No student body either. Is yeah, it's gonna be a didn't run up the middle here. And we get a timeout. Hold by Argyle. We got two timeouts left. Maybe you see if we can get the ball back. Twenty or thirty seconds. Yeah. Go for the punt so. block. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, uh, you know, this is not a, a running up the score. It's a. Hey, we're here to work on things too. Yeah, you just, you just do scenarios, right? We're in a playoff game and there's a minute left in the first half and we want the ball back or, or something. Let's see if we can block the kick. I will say this, as, as 
shaky as their, their punting game has been, Argyle really hadn't been close to blocking their kicks, right? So they're doing a decent job protecting the kicker. Yeah, I don't know if Argyle is really sold out yet, which we might see yeah. coming up. Uh, but like we mentioned, this game kicked at 6 o'clock. Uh, there will be some storms rolling through the Metroplex, but it's pretty clear right now. In fact, I see a moon trying to poke out of the clouds right now as it feels like 71 degrees here at Argyle High School, a 15 mile an hour wind. Uh, nice cool night. wind and Clark tells us it uh, feels great on the field, which is not what we get from Clark all the time <laughs> on the field. Robinson runs out to the right and is drugged down by Nathaniel Bruce. Give me a pickup of about eight. It's gonna set up third and two. And Argyle will call another timeout. Another stoppage as Argyle calls their last timeout. They can stop Denton here and, and force a punt. Maybe you get uh, a little bit of time to work before the uh, halftime horn. Yeah, we heard from Kenny. Rumor no, is. I haven't, I haven't heard from Kenny yet, who I think uh, still trying to work his way back. Yep. He, he was in Nashville and he's uh, playing, I think it was supposed to land. What, about 3 or 4 o'clock? Yeah, 3.30. So. Uh, but the weather diverted him to Houston. So I think he's, he's listening to us on a plane right now. See, I heard, I heard none of that's true. I heard he's been detained by TSA. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that his luggage is in quarantine right now. I don't oh, know what no. that's all about. but I think it's a pimento cheese on that uh, chicken patty that's he's got him in trouble. He's trying to bring some back from Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Miss Kenny. Uh, but he'll be, be back next week. Uh, I don't know if this is. If this is a, yeah, this won't be the last home game for Argyle as they'll host their first playoff game. This will be a running play here. With 51 seconds left, third and two for the Denton Broncos. Floyd back in shotgun, hands to Robinson. Robinson outside right and Ooh. with a first down. Brought down by Justice Lamarcus Jones and Malik Bracey. But uh, Lamarcus Robinson. Earns a first down for Denton, and that will keep the clock rolling. And they should be able to either run out this clock or got a little bit of momentum. May as well, you know, see if you, how close you can get. I'd take a couple shots right now if I was them, and then run one. Denton in no hurry here as the clock down to 26, now 25 seconds in the running clock. Austin Floyd back in shotgun formation. No hurry here for Denton. Floyd receives the snap, throws deep out left, looking for Sam Chandler in the ball, knocked away by Colton Rockmore. Rockmore with fantastic coverage, went up high, high point in the football, and knocked it down. Yeah, Another actually, senior. I think that Sam Chandler for Denton is the one that knocked the ball down. He saw he was going to be picked, and he just got up, went over him, and patted it down. Rockmore with credit for PBU. Takes us down to 13 seconds. So Kenny's listening to us. And it looks like this didn't run up the middle will be the last play of the first half. So Kenny is now somewhere around Paris as they're going In the air? around the weather. <laughs> and that'll do it for the first half of action. Argyle, seven points in the first quarter, 14 in the second. Let's see if we can uh, Catch up with Coach Rogers here momentarily as Argyle takes a 21-0 lead into the uh, first half break. As you know, Argyle moved the ball in their first two possessions of the ball game, but two unlikely turnovers. And uh, let's go down to Clark, who's standing by with Coach Rogers. All right, Coach, first quarter, a couple of turnovers. You can't be happy with that, but then a couple of big plays, and uh, I know you have to like the halftime lead. Well, I love the halftime lead. We've played a lot of kids, so there's some disorganization with some new kids working with some other kids. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think that our kids are, are playing hard and their minds right, so that's all I'm really worried about at this point. And just same thing going into the second half, just try to get all the seniors in and and, uh, and finish strong? Yeah, I mean, we're the, the seniors are getting their playing time and, and our football team is preparing uh, just like they would any other week. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, that was Clark uh, McNulty with Coach Rogers. On his way into the uh, into halftime, that halftime visit with Coach Rogers brought to you by 1845 Takes Texas, giving you a taste 
of what it'll be like in the Argyle locker room at the half. 1845 Taste Texas food as good as an Argyle victory located right here in Flower Mountain. 407 Barbecue Halftime Show is on the way next as uh, we've got a, a packed one as you know, the player spotlight with a couple of the Argyle seniors, Preston and Cooper Slate. We've got the Argyle ISD Eagle Update with Rick Heron tonight. We've got an out town scoreboard with Steven Bartolotta and stats and sounds from the first half and the Rabbit Med keys to the second. That's all coming up next in the 407 Barbecue Halftime Show as Argyle leads at the break 21-0. This is Eagle Football brought to you by the Argyle Eagles. Are you tired of looking at fog or broken window panes around your home or want to add just a touch of elegance to your bathroom? Maybe you just need to replace some glass shelving or tabletops? Well, then you need us at Glass and Mirror Specialists located right in Double Oak. Having served the entire DFW Metroplex for over 25 years, James Hodges and his experienced team can help you with all your glass and mirror needs. Call us at 972-679-1069 to schedule a consultation or visit our website at glassandmirrorspecialists.com. I want something light and modern. But also cozy, with an open concept kitchen. And a wine fridge. How about an outdoor living space? With a fireplace. And a spa bathroom for us. And one for Charlie. At Dries Custom Homes, we've been listening to our customers for 95 years to make sure every home is built on a foundation of you. Customize a floor plan or get into a new build right away. Get started at DriesHomes.com. Dries Custom Homes, we like your style. here at Eagle Stadium. 21-0 is the score at the half. And uh, let's get to our 407 Barbecue Halftime Show. And leading things off is our player spotlight, as we do every week. And this week we got a got a special one as we are joined by the twins, uh, the Slayton twins. Preston and Cooper stopped by and uh, chatted with us here uh, in the player spotlight. And let's get to it. Here is Preston and Cooper Slayton here in the 407 Barbecue Halftime Show. All right, Rapid Med Urgent Care brings us this week's players spotlight. And we are seated with seniors Cooper and Preston Slayton. Hey, guys, how are y'all? I'm great. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Doing really well. Okay, so I'm going to try to get your voices down. So, Cooper, I'm going to start with you. Uh, any college plans? Um, I, so I think I'll probably be uh, going to University of Alabama. Um, I'm thinking of uh, studying pre-med, thinking of uh, probably being in orthopedics, probably an orthopedic surgeon or doctor, something like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. How long have you wanted to do that? Um. I've been thinking about it a long time, probably since like, I think last year is when I really made a decision because uh, I get injured quite a bit. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get injured and uh, I just like learning about like the injuries and stuff and like how to fix myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, it just interests me. Yeah. Over the years, you've kind of learned, uh, yeah. oh, okay, this is my tibia and fibia and yeah. know, here's my humerus and yeah. okay, that makes sense. But d growing up, like did you... Have like a dream job that you wanted to one day grow up to be? Uh, not really. I think for <laughs> for the longest time, in uh probably elementary school and middle school, I probably wanted to be like a marine biologist or a zoologist, something like that. I feel yeah. like that's something a lot of people want to do. Sure. It's like animals and fish, just something cool like that. Okay, you're into fish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, I guess fishing. Yeah, I like fishing. Is that where it started? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just watching National Geographic and all the above. Yeah, everything. Yeah, well, very cool. Uh, Alabama, like, is there a football draw there? Like, you want to go see the games and stuff? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I always watch uh, Alabama football. Yeah. Uh, our dad went there. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, we've always watched it, so uh, it'll be nice to see it. You know, in real life. You know, For sure. In the stadiums. Yeah, it's an awesome stadium. Yeah. And it was a good win last week. It was, was. Yeah. Trailing at the half, I, mm -hmm. it was a little worrisome. Yeah. Uh, Preston, what about you? Where are you uh, headed to school? Um, I am probably going to Oklahoma State. I know okay. me and a couple other of my buddies are, like like Will Hodson and a couple of them. Sure. I know because um, I was thinking about Bama, but I'm not like 
I don't really feel like going as far away, like nine sure. hour drive to Bama. So yeah. Oklahoma State has been like kind of the the go to there. And also if I if I want to like see a game, I can just go visit him. Yeah. But yeah, Oklahoma State just seems to be the school that like g- gives me the most at the moment. Okay, and there's been a lot of people that have gone to Oklahoma State. I feel like Oklahoma yeah. State and Arkansas are popular choices here. Yeah, Oklahoma State, Arkansas, and then I know it used to Texas Tech used to be a big one too. Lots of people used yeah, to. Yeah, right. Um, so I guess location draws you there, but what about a major? What are you gonna? I haven't really decided yet. I'm still looking at some stuff. Some probably something something in business. I was never really into like. Are the first three years we did the engineering class here at the high school? So yeah. I was thinking like something like engineering maybe, but. I don't think that that's something I'd probably end up doing. Probably something in business, like maybe finance or something like that. But I'm still deciding. Uh, growing up, were you into fish? Yeah. Or... <laughs> I mean, probably not as much as he was, but <laughs> fishing, yeah, fishing. We were big fishermen. That's funny. Uh, so let's get into football. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll start with Cooper. Uh, he had a pretty big game last week. You were in, by, what I mean by that is you had a sack, you had a forced fumble, I think you had a PBU. Like you were kind of kind of doing everything. So, um uh, I mean, was it film study or was it the opponent? Like, what uh, what allowed you to be so so successful? Um, I think it was the, I mean, all of the above, like film study and the opponent, and it really it was really just like the first game that I was able to get out there and actually um, play full speed again because uh, I broke my uh, fibula at the beginning of the year, so it's been a struggle to kind of come back, and I've been uh, working through it, you know, week at a time. But last week was really the week that I was able to, you know, get out there and actually. Uh, do some things on the field, so yep. I stayed in there pretty much the the whole game. Yeah, you felt pretty free. Mm-hmm. What uh, when did you break it? It was uh, it was against Melissa. I think it was it was probably the beginning of the second drive. Yeah, and you're already back. Yeah, wow. It wasn't that bad though. It was like a still yeah hairline fracture, but yeah. Dang. Okay, so what what's like the last you know month and a half been like? Um, just a lot of rehab and trying to get back. Yeah, a lot of rehab. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of X rays. A lot of uh, a lot of just straight right leg exercise to get it back into it. A lot of jogging. That's pretty much it. Now yeah. is that like? I would imagine that that's a pretty arduous process because they're all things that you need to do, but they're not things like you want to be doing. Yeah. You know, they're kind of boring, but yeah. I don't know. So I mean, have like how's your how's it been emotionally the past month? Um, because was, also you're not playing. Yeah, you're doing like, all this, and you're not even reaping the rewards yet. Yeah. But I mean, now that you're back, I, I don't know. Just past month, what's it been like? It's uh, I mean, like you said, it's a. Uh, I mean, it really hasn't been fun. Like when you do all the stuff, and you don't really get like reward <laughs> for it. You don't get to play or anything. You right. Just like do all the rehab, and then like uh, and not being not being able to practice, and just like standing on the sidelines at games, not being able to like play with your uh, teammates and your friends. Yeah. It's like it's been pretty tough, and I had to like stay out of like six games, and then it's just. It's just not fun. Right. Like, I, like not even being able to, because I had to like walk, so not even be able, being able to like run out of the tunnel like with my yeah. teammates. It's like, right. uh, Preston, uh, you uh, had a good week last week as well against Independence, but you know when you're in the game, you know it, it feels like we're calling your name like a lot in a row. Like the coaching staff is not afraid to give you like five carries in a row. Uh, and I've talked to some running backs who love it, but I'm curious. I, do you like getting like that many consecutive carries in a row? I, I'm gonna say, I, yeah, I love getting the ball. I like, um, fi- like it if it's a play if it's a play that we've established that is working, like running up the gut. If we consistently get like five yards of carry, then yeah, I'd keep calling that. I'll gladly keep running it right up the gut. Yeah. I mean, if it if it's like a if it's a play that like hasn't been working, then it's not that fun to get like hit straight in the backfield. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I love running the ball and and like going out of the backfield and doing plenty of passes too. I love all that. Uh, okay, so how do you train for that? Like, are you just doing like a lot of intervals? Because I, that is not the same as running on a treadmill, where yeah. you're running as fast as you can, and then 15 seconds later doing it again. So, like, how do you how do you train for that? Um, in practice, it, we we practice as hard as we can for it. In practice, uh, we switch. We try to not tire ourselves out a whole lot, but especially when we're doing like the team session, we'll switch like. All of us will switch like every three plays, so we're not switching every single one. So we know how to like tire ourselves out. And in practice, when we go our team session, we go tempo too. So we try yeah. to go as fast as we can. Like, if we do a long run, get the ball or toss the ball to the sidelines, sprint back, do it again. So it's just working on conditioning ourselves for a situation like that. Okay. And so on Fridays, you feel like you're pretty used to it. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Because I just imagine you're just drained. Yeah. <laughs> just getting that many carries in a row. It seems crazy. 
So you were the twin without the mustache. Is that how you are told, like, apart? Yeah, basically, I mean, dur- over the summer, I had a mustache and he did it, but then we kind of, like... <laughs> switched? Yeah, kind of, like, switched roles, yep. so... It varies every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've decided that I, the mustache really wasn't my look, so he, he can take it all he wants, and people do use that as the way to, like, tell us apart, because people tell us our, like, our hair is too much alike, we have too much similar builds, but the mustache is the way that people just differentiate now yeah i was curious because a lot of twins do that they have to have one you know common thing that like no i'm the one with the short hair yeah or whatever so the mustache is funny yeah that's a good way to to tell each other apart um what's the worst thing about having a twin oh man because i on the outside i think there's a lot of cool parts yeah you know you just always got a buddy around and i'm sure you have been into the same things forever but okay what's what's something not fun um i mean i don't like when like people call me Preston. I mean, it's even with the mustache, it still happens all the time. And uh, <laughs> like, we had YMSL yesterday, and all the moms like still called me Preston, and I don't like I don't know what to tell them. And every time they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna get it by the end of the year. I'll get it next week." And and no, they don't. no, and they you're don't. not. <laughs> like, yeah, we all been saying the same thing for for years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just need a shirt that says I'm Cooper. Yeah, I might have to just put like a name tag. Thing one and thing two. Yeah, right. Um, all right, last thing for you guys. Your favorite Coach Rogers saying? I'll go. It's definitely Euphoria. Really? All, all, <laughs> all of his other ones. I, during his pre game speeches, I love all of his other ones when he says it like, go to Home Depot, buy wood, build a bridge, and get over it. Mm-hmm. All the other ones are classics. But I think I love Euphoria just because he says it the most. And every single time we do like, when he does the pregame speeches when we're in there like before lunch starts, and every time he says Euphoria, we can just you can just look around the room and everyone's just like, <laughs> Nice. Trying to hold in their laughter, so I think that's definitely my favorite. That's great. Um, probably. Uh, I really like Euphoria too. I also like. Uh, I don't think he mentioned. I like uh, Burn the Boats. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if he said that one this year, but he said it a lot last year. Just, just burn the boats. There's no going back. Yeah. I like. I love that one. Yeah, that's a cool one. That's a funny one and a cool one. Yeah. I had to burn the boats. I think that would get me going. Yeah. If I heard about that. Awesome. Well, it's great to meet you guys. Uh, glad you're back healthy and. Yeah, glad you're toting the rock five, six times in a row, you know, yeah, whenever absolutely. you get in there. But, um, I mean, you guys are really turning it around. I went to, I thought, you know, could have been a little down around here. But you guys are looking really good, really good win over Emerson. And, you know, take care of business. You got another district title on your hands. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. good to get to meet you guys. Best luck in the future and uh, good luck the rest of the year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks to Preston and Cooper Slayton for their time in this week's Player Spotlight. We are inside the 407 Barbecue Halftime Show as Argyle leads Denton at the break, 21-0. And uh, we're going to keep this 407 Barbecue Halftime Show rolling after a a timeout. And uh, coming up after the break, we're going to get the Argyle ISD Eagle update and an out-of-town scoreboard. This is Argyle Eagles Booster Club broadcast. CR Plumbing is a small family-owned business operated by Clayton and Hannah Robbins. Hannah grew up in Argyle, and no one knows these stomping grounds like she does. CR Plumbing prides ourselves on taking care of our customers, employees, and serving our community. We offer an array of plumbing services, including water filtration systems, leak detection and repairs, water heater tankless conversions, and platinum memberships. Visit our website for any plumbing needs at crplumbingdfw.com. We are CR Plumbing, your local plumber you can trust. 407 Barbecue is a proud supporter of the Argyle Eagles. Named the very best barbecue in all of DFW several times over, 407 Barbecue offers an array of award-winning smoked meats, including mouth-watering brisket and ribs. No plate is complete without one of their world-famous sides and a bowl of Grandma's Banana Pudding. Family owned and operated by your neighbors right here in Argyle. See their menu and catering options online at 407bbq.com. Or see for yourself at I-35W, exit 407, 407 Barbecue. Argyle with the lead here at the halftime on senior night at Eagles Stadium. Kick got moved up an hour to the threat of uh, some storms later. We'll be headed through the Metroplex, but all clear right now in all Argyle in the first half as 407 Barbecue Halftime Show rolls on. 
Let's get to our Argyle ISD Eagle update, and this is brought to you by Lori Jacobson and the Legacy Group. Hello, Eagle fans. This is Rick Heron, Argyle ISD's Director of Communications, here with this week's Eagle update. Well, here's your chance to nominate a teacher or staff member who is making a difference in Argyle ISD. Any parents or students can nominate a Soaring Star employee. Well, that's a new program the district has started this year as a recognition for some of our best and brightest and designed to highlight Eagles all across the district who are doing exceptional things every day. So how do you vote? Well, you simply visit ArgyleSD.com or watch for this week's Eagle Extra District newsletter to submit your selections. Well, with the holiday season approaching, here's a great way for our community to help out fellow Eagles. The Argyle SD Thanksgiving Food Drive is coming soon. All classrooms across the district will be collecting non-perishable food items, bringing our community together in an effort to support fellow Argyle families in need. Now, if you know of a family in need within the Argyle SD community, please contact the Argyle Administration Building. Now, reminder, donations are due no later than Monday, November 12th. So this is a great time for our community to help out fellow Eagles. Okay, who's ready for some basketball? Get ready, because the seasons are almost here for the Lady Eagles and Eagles, and in Argyle ISD, this time of year always means one thing, and it's time for Midnight Madness. Yes, this tip-off event for the seasons is almost here. It's gonna happen at the Argyle High School Arena on Friday, November 3rd at 8.30 p.m. This is a can't-miss event for families and kids, again, at the Argyle High School Arena on Friday, November 3rd, at 8 30 p.m so don't miss your chance to meet the eagles and lady eagle basketball teams come on out enjoy food freebies music prizes and friendly competitions well all of the argyle isd campuses across the district will soon be celebrating a special day on the calendar and that's veterans day on friday november 10th and also at the high school they will be celebrating on november 14th all veterans in the community are invited to attend and be part of these special celebrations. Please check the Argyle SD campus websites for specific times. Well, this week we kicked off the Bond and Growth Planning Committee meetings at the Argyle ISD Administration Building. This 50-member committee made up of parents, teachers, and students began meeting in this process and they will start evaluating district finances, facilities, demographics, and curriculum in building a bond package for the district. Please watch for more details of the process and the presentations as they'll be posted on argyleisd.com. Well, that's it for this week's Eagle Update. Until next time, go Eagles! Thank you, Rick Heron. That's the Argyle ISD Eagle Update. We like to highlight all the events going around the school district and community. And uh, thanks so much to Rick Heron for doing that for us each week. As you're just joining us, it's 21-0. Here, uh, Argyle leading Ditton at the halftime as Argyle Band has now made their way on the field. As the senior night festivities were uh, that took place before the game, over 70 seniors just in fall sports were announced before the game. as was uh, quite the show as the line reached across the fo football field and across the track. A lot of uh, successful seniors here at Argyle High School. All right, let's, uh, let's step aside again here inside the halftime show and and coming up after the break, uh, we'll get uh, an out-of-town scoreboard and take a look at some of the first half stats and sounds. That's all coming up next on the 407 Barbecue Halftime Show. This is Eagles, Argyle Eagles, Booster Club Broadcast. Introducing 308 Construction and Solutions Group. From brand new projects to intricate remodels, we've got you covered. No need to call multiple contractors. With in-house electrical and plumbing teams, we simplify your journey. Proudly based right here in Argyle, Texas, we're not just builders. We're your neighbors and community members. Let the team at 308 Construction be your first call for every construction, electrical, and plumbing need. 308 Construction and Solutions Group, building the heart of the DFW, one project at a time. Cycle Center of Denton and BMW Motorcycles of Denton proudly support Argyle Athletics. Cycle Center is your local, family-owned and operated power sports store with the best selection of motorcycles, all-terrain vehicles, and side-by-side -side fun and work machines. Shop the largest parts and accessories showroom in North Texas and experience a factory-trained service department that will support you with the great service to keep your machine running at its best. Cycle Center wants to thank all the Argyle football fans, coaches, and faculty that make Argyle the best school in Texas. Come see why Cycle Center of Denton is called your power sports store with more.
Bartolotta, who's uh, on duty tonight. As I know this Argyle game is ahead of most, Stephen, uh, due to uh, kicking off at six, but uh, still a lot of big matchups tonight with district titles on the line. And uh, let's get some of the scores, uh, some out-of-town scores for our, our out-of-town scoreboard with our own Stephen Bartolotta. Hey, Stephen. Well, Blake, the second to last week of the regular season has brought forth some colossal matchups tonight. We'll get to a few of those. First, last night in District 35A, the final game of the year for Frisco Memorial. They were on the road at Creekview, and they blocked the game-tying field goal with five seconds less to pick up a 24-21 win. They closed the year out at 2-4 and four in district play and 2-8 and eight overall. Creekview, meanwhile, they're still winless on the year 0-5 and, and 0-9 and on the year. Later tonight, Independence will be at Lake Dallas. Lake Dallas is 7-1 and one on the year and 3-1 and one in district play. Independence just 1-3 and three and 1-7 and seven overall. And Emerson, they have the week off and probably a good time for that as they have lost two straight tough ones to Argyle and Lake Dallas. Top 10 scores from tonight. A couple of games already underway because of the potential of bad weather. Number one, Melissa is one of those. They lead Princeton on the road 21-7. to That game is at the half. Thursday night, it would Midlo Midlothian Heritage. They captured the district title with a very thrilling win over Seguin, 21-14. to It took a fourth-quarter interception with four minutes left from Ryan Satterwhite to seal the deal for Heritage as that stingy defense comes up big in the clutch, and they win it 21-14. to Lake Creek, number two in the state, they have the night off. They are 9-0 on the year. Texas High will be at White House tonight. Number five, Port Natchez Grove is on the road against Nederland. Number six, South Oak Cliff takes on Woodrow Wilson. Number seven, Lovejoy, that game is underway. They lead Greenville 14 to nothing as they approach halftime. Alamo Heights, number eight in the state. They will take on San Antonio Lanier. That game is tomorrow evening. Polytechnic, they take on number 10, Colleyville Heritage. That game will get started momentarily. And the two very big ones in 6A tonight, they're both for district titles, and they are both brand powerhouse names. Number 6, South Lake Carroll, is at number 11, Byron Nelson. Nelson trying to do something they have never done, and they lead it over Carroll right now. 13-3, to the Bobcats are up on the Dragons as they approach halftime in that one. Quarterback Tom Van Grote, he has thrown for a touchdown and they have 213 yards of total offense already on the night. The winner is the district champion in that one. And the other big one, number one, Duncanville, and number three, DeSoto. Two state champions, two undefeated teams. One will win the district title. The other will have their first loss on the year. That one kicks momentarily, pending, hopefully, some good weather from South Dallas. Those are all the scores we have for you tonight, Blake. Well, thank you, Poppy. And uh, yeah, surprising Byron up over South Lake. That'd be a that'd be a big game for our uh, neighbors just to the south of us, Byron Nelson. And uh, yeah, very really really excited for that uh, Duncanville DeSoto game here coming up. As uh, you know, a lot of games started they're going to start normal, uh, but a few have started early due to the threat of uh, some storms that we may get in the Metroplex here later on, but uh, thank you for those scores, uh, Poppy. Here at Eagle Stadium, Argyle leads 21-0 over the Denton Broncos, and uh, let's take a look at some of the stats and sounds from the first half, as uh, <coughs> if you missed it, Argyle received the first kickoff and uh, drove down into Denton territory before McGuire Gasperson threw his second interception of the season. Denton could not capitalize, though, and had to punt it back to Argyle. Argyle again Ran it all the way down to the Denton goal line before Jake Kreckler fumbles. His first fumble since the very first game of the year against Melissa. And uh, I believe they did recover that one against Melissa. So he had not lost a fumble all year, but loses this one tonight. Denton recovered it in the end zone. So they started their own 20, but uh, couldn't get any points on that drive either. But, you know, two early turnovers there. Very un uncharacteristic for the Argyle offense. Luckily, the defense did, uh, did recover. And a hold Ditton out of the end zone for the entire first half. Uh, but then uh, every time that Argyle touched the ball after that, uh, well, just, I guess the next three possessions they scored touchdowns. The one where they were trying to rush against the first half, they didn't score. But for the next three possessions, they scored touchdowns. And uh, on their first drive, they battled it down. And Jake Kreckler uh, burst in from a couple yards out for the first touchdown of tonight's game. And on the second drive, it was the second play from scrimmage. Jake Kreckler again, this one, his first went from two, the next, 75. Second and four for Argyle, 640 remaining in this first half, Argyle with a 7-0 lead. Kreckler makes a man miss, he's into the secondary. Now to midfield, across the Eagle logo, out to the right hash, and he's gonna outrun these Broncos. 20, 10, five, and into the end zone, Jake Kreckler. Wow, 
and a 75-yard touchdown run for Jake on senior night. Wow, and he showed some really good wheels right there, right? He just ran past a couple of guys in the secondary, but then once he got to about the 30-yard 30 30-yard 30 line, it was just a sprint to the end zone, and he had just enough to get in. Yeah, nice move to get into the secondary, and then Crickler <laughs> turned on the afterburners, outran the Broncos, and into the end zone, giving an Argyle a 14-0 lead. Denton has tried to establish the run game, and uh, we'll give you some more uh, stats here coming up, but their main running back, LaMarcus Robinson, 22 attempts in the first half. That's a game load for most running backs, but he had that in the first 24 minutes. Uh, but because of that, you know, just small gains here and there, and Denton has, has never really put uh, much of a drive together and uh, has not scored points here in the first half. Uh, but on the uh, third straight uh, scoring drive for Argyle, it was a little bit of trickeration on their first play from scrimmage, and uh, it was speed shown again by the Argyle offense, this time by Pounds, Lane Stewart. Argyle will begin at the Denton 38. Fake to Crickler and a handoff on an end around to Lane Stewart. <laughs> Stewart with speed along the left side, up the left sideline. He's going past all the Broncos and into the end zone. Look at, look at that track speed by Lane Stewart. Into the end zone is Argyle all aboard Lane Stewart on senior night. Nice run there by the senior. Uh, on an end around, it just looked like the Denton Broncos were stuck in mud as Lane Stewart showed off his speed up the left sideline and into the end zone. And that is your scoring for the first half as Argyle leads 21-0. And look at some of the stats here. Uh, some team stats for both teams. Argyle doubling up Denton on first downs 12-6. Total yards, all Argyle, 270-72. to In fact, Denton has... Uh, no yards through the air, zero passing yards. They're five of 10, but uh, due to some sacks and uh, passes behind the line of scrimmage, they uh, are at zero passing yards. Argyle just at 53 passing yards, as most of their damage has been done on the ground. 217 yards on the ground for Argyle in the first half on 21 attempts. Denton, 72 yards on 26 carries. So the difference in yards per rush there, Argyle over 10 yards a rush, Denton under three. Penalties, three for Denton, two for Argyle. And of course, Argyle with the two turnovers that we just mentioned. As those are your team stats. Some individual stats from the first half. Lawson Floyd, 5 of 10 passing for no yards. What a crazy stat line that is for the senior quarterback for Denton. Uh, Argyle passing McGuire Gasperson, 4 of 9 for 53 yards and an interception. Denton rushing the football, 22 attempts from LaMarcus Robinson for 62 yards. Three attempts for 10 yards for Jacoby Gladney. And one attempt for no yards for Keyshawn Diego. Receiving Diego with three catches for 24 yards. Uh, Sam Chandler, one catch for two yards. And uh, I think I think here's the uh, here's the stat error for those uh, keeping track at home. Jackson Higgins has a catch here uh, in the stat book for minus 26 yards. I remember that play. That was just a catch for no yards uh, after an intentional grounding. Uh, so that may be the discrepancy there. So you may want to throw some didn't passing yards uh, their way. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, not a lot of offense out of the Broncos in the first half. Argyle rushing the football. Jake Kreckler, 16 carries for 166 yards and two touchdowns. Lane Stewart with that carry on the end around for 38 yards and a touchdown. Preston Slayton with a couple carries for 12 yards. And McGuire Gasperson has a couple uh, rushes for uh, about a yard. Will Krzyzak, three catches for 42 yards. And Will Hodson has a catch for 11. And those are your stats and your sounds from the first half as Argyle leads at the halftime break. 21-0 here on senior night in Argyle as the Argyle band is just finishing up and the uh, players are making their way back out onto the field. So we're going to take one more timeout here in the 407 Barbecue Halftime Show. And coming up next, uh, Mitch and Clark will rejoin me and we'll get you ready for the second half. This is Argyle Eagle Football and it's brought to you by the Argyle Eagles Booster Club. Buying or selling a home is likely your greatest investment. Lori Jacobson and the Legacy Group believe in making the process easy and simple for your family. Whether you're moving into your forever home in Argyle, need help remodeling or staging, or are a first-time buyer, Lori's dedicated to making sure all of her clients walk away from the transaction satisfied. She has a saying that you walk in as a client, but you leave as a friend. So it's no secret why she's been named Best Real Estate Agent by D Magazine yet again. Lori Jacobson encourages all the Argyle Eagles to leave a legacy both on and off the field. Go Eagles. 
Howdy, folks. Marty B. here, inviting you to come to each of our four amazing restaurants. At Marty B.'s, join us for an outstanding atmosphere of family, food, fun, and entertainment. Or join us at Rustico Wood Fired Grill and Wine Bar for an intimate date night in a rustic, elegant setting. Looking for a taste of upscale Texas? Join us at 1845, where it's designed like Dallas, but tastes like Fort Worth. Come experience amazing at all of our fine restaurants. And new this summer, put a pep in your two-step at Marty B.'s Coffee Co., right next to Marty B.'s Restaurant. Look forward to seeing you there. Updating your home is too important to do alone. The Design House of Denton has designers and experts on staff who want to help. Whether it's simply new flooring or having an entire wing of your home remodeled, the Design House has a full spectrum of services for any size idea you have. They care about you and your home both during and after your project. My wife and I know this from personal experience. Now it's time to see for yourself. Go see the friendly staff at their gorgeous showroom located just outside Golden Triangle Mall at 2303 Colorado Boulevard. The Design House of Denton, locally owned and proud members of Argyle Eagle Nation. Park Place is proud to support Argyle High School and all you Eagles fans out there. You deserve to feel like a winner, whether you're cheering on your favorite team or shopping for your new favorite car. And at Park Place Lexus Grapevine and Land Rover DFW, you'll enjoy a fully customized luxury dealership experience that'll make you feel like the MVP. So head over to your nearest Park Place dealership or visit parkplace.com and see what makes them the experts in excellence. Back at Eagle Stadium here on Senior Night in Argyle kicking off to begin this second half. Kick sails into the end zone. So Ditton will begin this second half at their own 25. And real, real quickly, Clark, you're on the sideline. I think the weather is getting a little cooler, but tell us about the Chick-fil-A on 407 mood on the sideline. Well, they're coming up. You know, these senior night, the, the halftime is always so long. So they kind of have to cool their heels over there in the end zone until they can come back out. But it might take them a couple plays, but I think they're going to get right back into it. Thank you, Clark. As uh, Clark McNulty on the sideline, Mitch Cullen riding shotgun tonight. Bryce Rapp is our spotter. And Kenny Arthur is in route, I think. Denton Bron the Denton Broncos begin uh, the second half uh, going right to left, and his screen passes off the back of an offensive lineman incomplete as Luke Lane hammers uh, the Denton quarterback, Lawson Floyd. As, uh, thank you so much for watching us. Uh, if you're Checking us out on YouTube as a uh, special thanks to the talent putting that together and out for us. It's a wonderful product. And if you're listening, here's your Cinch Cleaners uniform update as the Denton Broncos have a gold and purple palette, gold helmets, white tops, and purple pants. Argyle with white helmets, black tops, and red pants. Think of the Washington Huskies, right? That's really good, yep. As Floyd back to pass again, throws it straight into the Argyle bench as he was getting pressured by Jack Teller. And two incomplete passes begin the second half for the Denton Broncos. So who that, who's Argyle look like? Uh, yeah. Where? Argyle with white helmets and maybe black Maybe a Texas Tech look. Yeah, you know, maybe. I mean, they, they've had that look before. Um, well. and they have so many uniform combinations. And they don't really take after anybody but themselves. So. I love that white helmet look, though. Yeah, I do, too. Third and long for the Denton Broncos. Set, trying to set up a screen, and they've got it here. But Bud Petter sniffs it out and drags down Robinson after a gain of about three. That's going to leave a long fourth down, and uh, you're looking at a Broncos punt to begin the second half. Yeah, into a win that's a little bit stiffer than it was in that first half. Yeah, yeah. I want to go down to Clark. Uh, Clark, has the win picked up at all? Actually, it's kind of it's just kind of maintaining right now. It is still pretty stiff. Yeah, they're going to have a hard time throwing the ball down the field, especially into it. What about punting? They can do good with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's go low and long. Yeah. yeah you may want to hit a worm burner here. Kind of punt in the wind. I'd put two guys back. As Nathaniel Bruce is back to punt. That punt may have been deflected. It's wobbling out towards midfield. As Devin Owen was close to getting a hand on it. I don't know if he did or not, but Argyle, nonetheless, will begin at their own 49. Your starters for this Argyle offense, Tyler Roberts, Leighton Firestone, Carter Wilson, Thor Johansson, and Weston Cheney along the front. You got Braden Box starting at tight end tonight with McGuire Gasperson at quarterback, Jake Kreckler at wide, or excuse me, running back, and 
Will Krizyak, Lane Stewart, and Will Hodson are your receivers as the starters will begin the second half as Argyle leads 21-0. A minute gone into this third quarter. Gasperson hands to Kreckler. Kreckler up the middle and brought down by a couple Broncos into Bronco territory. Brought down at the 44. Brought down by Jacob Kaufman, a middle linebacker for this Broncos squad. Gain a six. Give him seven. It'll be a second and three. Gasperson. Claps with Kreckler to his left, hands off to Kreckler again. Up the middle, bounces it out left, and breaks away from Kaufman, now into the secondary, brought down after a gain of about five to the knit 38. Credit McMod, McCod, uh, with, the, with the tackle, and Argyle with the first and 10 at the knit 38. And rolling. Third straight carry for Kreckler, up the middle again, and brought down from behind by Kaufman, the linebacker down at the 35, that's a gain of three for Jake Kreckler. 16 carries in the first half, and now the first three for Argyle in the third quarter. Yeah, and everything's right through that A-gap, right, on either side of the center. They don't, you know, they had the one sweep that was kind of a reverse for a touchdown, but most everything's been right in those A-gaps. Pass out to Will Hodson along the left sideline, catch, breaks the tackle, and into the secondary, brought down at the 23, McMahon on the tackle again, but not before Will Hodson. Gains a first down for the Argyle Eagles down to the Denton 22-yard line, which sets up a first and 10, and it's back to Kreckler. Up the middle and fights his way for a couple down to the Denton 19, gain of about three. Yeah, and he's done a really good job of sidestepping the tackles, right? I mean, he's, he's going straight ahead, but a sidestep here, a sidestep there, and he's got six yards. Yeah, finally brought down by Brandon Garcia, 5'11", senior linebacker for the Broncos. Jasperson with Kreckler to his right, hands off to him. Now runs to the left and into the Denton Broncos secondary before he's brought down around the 10 yard line. Make it the 11, it's a gain of four and a first down for Argyle. The fourth first down of the drive, brought down by McCaught again. Yeah, big number 90, Marlon Ferguson had a shot at him in backfield, missed. So ball at the 11, so they can get a first down without scoring. Kreckler up the middle, spins off of a tackle. Now and on the left boundary and into the end zone, Jake Kreckler. Third touchdown tonight. This one from 11 yards out. All aboard, Eagles touchdown. Yeah, that may be his best run of the night other than the 75 yarder. He just spun around, sidestep, duked a guy, and all of a sudden he's in the end zone. Running behind Tyler Roberts, Leighton Firestone, and Carter Wilson along that left side. Let's throw Thor Johansson and Weston Cheney in there as well. And Argyle pending this Anthony Rubicalver PAT, which is up and good. Argyle with a 28-0 lead over the Denton Broncos and running behind Thor Johansson. And uh, Thor caught up with him earlier this year. And, uh, you know, these offensive linemen, you know, by nature, nice guys, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, until you make them mad. And uh, Thor here talks about how he likes to uh, protect his teammates from time to time. I wouldn't say I have a mean streak. I have been known to get fired up on the sidelines and definitely have talked a little bit during the games. I don't try to. I never go into a game thinking, oh, I'm going to talk, mm -hmm. talk a bunch of smack. But if I see someone hit a running back late or hit one of our linemen especially or our quarterback, mm -hmm. I might have to let them know the next time I hit them, hey, I'm, I'm here. If you want to do that, you can come to me. <laughs> don't, you kinda, don't you love that attitude by an offensive lineman? Yeah, never trust a guy that says, I don't think I have a mean streak. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I do. But yeah, uh, we got to drive some response in here as that drive dominated by Jake Kreckler. Yeah, that drive brought to us by Dave and Kathy Salisbury at the real estate station. Argyle kick is up and Golly. through the end zone. Is that hit in the green grass that they just let go. Beckham Kimbrell, yeah, he kicked it to about the one. Oh, you're saying you may want to catch that football? Well, I'm saying you may want to watch it because it could check up and come backwards, and then it's as good as an onside kick, right? Everybody's going after it, live ball. They just, they're just very, as my dad would say, very cavalier about those kickoffs. You may want to tell Clark to get get Beckham to she put a little backspin on that ball. Let's see if we can get a, a recovery here. See if you can drop it at the five, then you really yeah, got some right. cooking. Broncos possession will begin at their own 25. Floyd back in shotgun formation. Uh, hands to Robinson. Robinson outside right. 
and it takes three Eagles to bring him down as Devin Owens in there, and so is Brennan Hickman, but it's Justice Jones who gets credit with the tackle. Gained of about three, and Mitch, I think Robinson's gonna flirt with 40 carries tonight. Yeah, and you know what? You don't want him to get ahead of steam, right? You want him to have to kind of slow down and wait for a hold open, because if he gets going, man, he's a load. 6'1", 205-pound running back, built like a running back, as it is second and seven from the 28. Play action pass, Floyd up the right sideline, underthrown and intercepted. Malik Gracie with his first varsity interception as he takes the pass away from Denton and it's the first Bronco turnover tonight. Yeah, he just had inside leverage on the receiver and the ball was thrown to the inside and underthrown and he did a good job of having his head turned back towards the quarterback. He could see the play and it just scooped underneath the receiver and picked it off. It's throwing the ball into the wind. That could have had something to do with it. Had it had a lot to do with it, I'm sure, yeah. And it was a pretty long pass, but uh, Malik just did a great job of having that leverage where he needed to. Still your starters here for your Argyle offense. You got a couple late stragglers in there. Preston Slayton now in at running back, and I think I see a, an Ethan Fetters out at wide receiver. It's, but it's Preston Slayton up the middle, and look at this magic. Up ahead, gain of about 11. Yep, now make it 12. Preston Slayton, this carry goes for a first down and into Denton territory before he's brought down by Maldonado. Yeah, super quick right there, right? Not the biggest guy, but man, when you give it to him, he's got a little bit of space. You got to really look out. Argyle into Ditton territory, eight minutes remaining in this third quarter. Gasperson wants to throw with the win. He's got Lane Stewart, but overthrows him. Man, he was wide open too. When he had two or three steps on the defender, the ball was overthrown by about a yard. Yeah, we can hear that wind starting to pick up. And, and it had but, something to do with that pass, right? Yeah, it, I mean, it flew out of, out of Gasperson's hands and didn't really settle down until it hit the turf. But yeah, Lane Stewart wide open up the right hash. He checks out and in is Jackson Green for him. But Gasperson's going to hand off to Slayton as he jitterbugs up ahead for about six. And down to the Denton 37 before he's brought down by Tavarian Ray. Yeah, and see the uh, Argyle can do so much because you know that you're going to get four, five, six on each run and play, right? So you can take that shot on first down and not worry about it because in your second down you get your six and you got a manageable third down. Slayton cut it in half after the gain of five, and it's going to go backwards as we're going to get our first penalty of the second half. This on Argyle. Foul start. Offense number 14. Five yard penalty. Third down. I thought he said 15. What did he say? Good job on that referee of fighting through that echo. A lot of them will just quit and turn off their mic, but gets the false start call in there. Backs it back, uh, now officially third and nine from the Denton 41. I'd run it and then run it again if I don't get it. Back to pass, Gasperson on a slant, hits Stewart across the middle, past the first down marker, and past the secondary and into the end zone. Lane Stewart shows his speed again, a touchdown, 41 yards from Gasperson to Stewart, all aboard. Lane Stewart's second touchdown tonight. Yeah, just a little slant route right there, and he found the seam, but Man, he should never have scored right there, but he just turned on the speed and ran right past those guys. Man, he's fast. You know, I, I, we talked to him in our player spotlight segment earlier this year, who's the fastest, and he's, uh, you know, he didn't want to say, but yep. I think he, he, uh, he's been showing it tonight. I think he, he may be the fastest kid on the team. Yeah, and he, you're right. He showed it there because there's like three Broncos that had a chance to get him. Rubacabra, PAT is up and good, and Argyle extends their lead to 35. Argyle football will continue in a moment in a word from this, uh, in a word from Monument Realty. What's the secret to scoring big in the real estate game? Put the ball in the hands of the winning realtor in Argyle, Lorena Moore with Monument Realty. Lorena knows all of the plays to find the perfect match for you, whether you're buying or selling. Real estate is about connections, and there's no better quarterback in Argyle than Lorena Moore. Find her at dfwmorehomes.com or look for her QR code around Eagle Stadium. Don't get stuck on the sidelines. Go with Lorena Moore with Monument Realty. 
Hello, fellow Eagles fans. This is Pastor Jen at Argyle United Methodist Church. If you're looking for a church family, I want to invite you to join us for church on Sunday at 9 a.m. for our traditional service or at 11 a.m. for our modern service. We also have small groups for the entire family, all ages, at 10 a.m. We'd love to see you there. Five zero is your score here at Eagle Stadium. Seven zero eight remaining in the third quarter. Look, Beckham Kimbrell's kick sails into the end zone, lands in the end zone. So Clark has not relayed that message to Beckham just yet. Well, it may be different in the fourth quarter, right? Maybe. Keep it in the wind. And it All could right. be, yeah, yeah, it could be different in the, in the wind. Do you want to know who's bringing us tonight's third quarter? I do, please. Yeah, it's brought to us with the generous support of Rapid Med Urgent Care, Dave and Kathy Salisbury at the Real Estate Station, Evergreen Lawn and Landscape, CR Plumbing, Eagle Realty, Susan Randall at Argyle Dental, BB Living Harvest, Dr. Rex Road at Argyle Family Chiropractic, Rich McDowell, Synergy One Lending, Shirley Wiley at Argyle Fine Arts Preschool, Go Vision, Noble Classic Homes, Independent Financial, Alpha Women's Fitness, and our title sponsor this year, Brian McClarty and 407 Barbecue. Swing pass out to Robinson. He just goes nowhere. Okay, so tell me, you're as big as him, and you catch it, and here comes a DB up. Are you going to stop and try and sidestep it, or are you just going to truck him? Um, I mean, if as big as he is, might try to truck a guy or yeah, two. Yeah, you got you got 70 pounds on him. Yeah, tackle there by Watson Bell. Yeah, I know he's got some pounds on Watson Bell. He's probably tired of getting hit because he's taking well, he's, a yeah, beating. He's touched the ball nearly 25 times. And the first down play for Denton goes for two. And second and eight, and this wow. pass is thrown out to the sideline and caught and intercepted what? by Luke Lane. I believe Floyd was trying to throw that ball away, but Lloyd got a foot down, and it's back-to-back -back interceptions for this Eagles defense. Yeah, and he laid out for it. It's kind of like the toe tap, right? He lays out and gets his toes in bounds and picks it off. That was a great catch. Catch of the game so far. Hardly ever do you see the, uh, the catch motion by the referee on, on a defensive play, but line judge had to come in there and say, yeah, Luke Lane caught it. And it's an interception for Argyle, and the Eagles will begin in Ditton territory. The Bronco 32 yard line, 628 remaining in this third quarter. All Argyle as they lead 35 0. Gasterson hands to Cooper Slayton, excuse me, Preston Slayton, off the right tackle and into the secondary, down past the 20, and brought down by a couple Broncos at the 18 yard line. Gain of 14 for Preston Slayton before being brought down by Kaz Murphy. Yeah, those big guys up front are really doing a really uh, good job of controlling the line of scrimmage and creating the space for the running backs tonight. Gasperson claps. Now a screen out to Krizyak is mishandled. I believe Gasperson put that ball too far upfield. Ball sails off Krizyak's hands out of bounds. So it's an incomplete pass on first down. We got a Bronco down. Yeah, it looked like Aiden Fletcher was trying to get out there and uh, lead the way blocking and just couldn't get out there before the pass got there and just too much traffic to try and catch the ball. It's the second time Tavarian Ray has been down tonight. He was able to walk off under his own power on the first one. Let's hope he can do the same here on this one. 6.03 remaining in this third quarter. And uh, I, don't know, I can't remember if it was Clark or you, Mitch, that said we had a fast-moving first half. And you know, this is what happens when you talk about how why quickly did a game is moving. <laughs> why did Clark say that? I don't get it. I don't know why either one of you ever said that. Uh, While well, we got a minute, do we have an update on the Rangers game? Uh, uh, World Series game one going on in Arlington tonight. I'm sure the people listening already know, right? But I think it's after a after one. Oh, oh wait, uh, so Arizona got two hits in the second, but it looks like the end of two, and it's 2-0 Rangers going to the top of the third. Very good. So, pretty interesting times right now, right? I don't know if uh, I've ever broadcast when the Rangers had a playoff game. So that's kind of interesting. Probably a good thing they got the uh, retractable roof now. They've been yeah. in the older stadium. It might be kind of iffy playing. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's cool. All uh, all four teams in action. Obviously. Kenny's bailing on us. He says. I saw that. 
Because it's not worth coming. Yeah, I guess we're what not is, worth it. What does that mean? Sargal football's not worth it, Kenny. Six oh three as we're back in action. I just want the to know he said that. <laughs> Gasperson, oh man, he's slaying by a couple Broncos in the backfield. This is going to be the first sack for Denton tonight. And that's uh, Braylon Madison disrupting things in the backfield. And that's going to cause a third and long after that loss of five. Yeah, just uh, probably a uh, coverage sack right there. Everything just kind of broke down after you hold it for so long. Gasperson claps, rolls out left, fires to the left sideline, late and nearly intercepted. Those Mitch, those passes out to the boundary. If they're not on time, they're, uh, they, they're normally headed the other direction, but Bronco knocked him down. And incomplete pass, and now we got fourth and long. Yeah, and it's not hard as a defender to figure out where you're going because as you run to the sideline, you start running out of options, right? And um, he just probably ran a little bit too far before he threw that one. So Ryan Croker, sophomore, on the coverage, and Argyle will go for this fourth and long. They're at the Ditton 22. They got the win. I'm surprised they don't want to try a field goal. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of bad with the score 35 nothing, but at least see if you can do it, right? I think that would have been my call. This one, Gasperson throwing up the seam to Lane Stewart, caught touchdown. Yeah, that's even worse than the field goal. Right? <laughs> throwing the touchdown on fourth down, but great throw, great catch. Lane Stewart went up for it. There was a lot of, a lot of coverage there, and he went up, fought for the ball, and got it. Lane Stewart running up the seam, catches his third touchdown tonight. This run from 22 yards out. Is Argyle a 41 nothing lead? Yeah, and Argyle just, uh, Coach Rogers said things, you know, had some other players in, weren't really clicking, but they are now. PAT for Argyle is good. Extends the Argyle lead to 42 nothing here at Eagle Stadium uh, on senior night. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Eagles football will continue in a moment. This is Billy Klein. DFW Door Repair was repairing, restoring, and replacing doors and houses all over town when a couple of guys from Austin showed up and said, Billy, we need to take this nationwide. I said, I don't know how to do that. They said, we do. And that's how YourNewDoor.com was born. I'm telling you this in case it all works out and we become a big deal nationwide. You'll be able to say, I was there the day it was born. Billy and Jennifer help sponsor our ball games. Check it out, yournewdoor.com. For exceptional lawn care, call Evergreen Lawn and Landscape. We're a family-owned business serving Argyle for more than 30 years. Our services include lawn maintenance, fertilization, sod installation, and landscaping. Our service techs and support staff are fully trained and work hard to make your lawn the best it can be. Contact them today at evergreenlls.com. That's Evergreen Lawn and Landscaping at evergreenlls.com. Let us love your lawn as much as you do at evergreenlls.com. This kick is returnable from the six and not going very far as hammered at the 18 is Keyshawn Diego brought down by Chase Magley. So Clark got in there and told him, drop the ball on the five yard line and see what happens. They returned it and look where they are. He got, what, seven 16, yards? Seven, seven yards of, of offense. And Mitch, just as we were talking about the World Series, the Diamondbacks put up two runs. They did. Game tied at two after a Corbin Carroll triple. That game tight in Arlington. This game at Eagle Stadium, not so much, as the Eagles lead 42-0 over the Denton Broncos as this Denton possession will begin at their own 17, moving right to left on your screen. Robinson handle. Handled in the background, Justice Jones with a tackle for loss. As running back Marcus Robinson, nowhere to go. Yeah, didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage right there. You know, Mitch, looking at some of their stats, this is the Denton's ninth game of the year. Marcus Robinson, 138 carries. I mean, he's going to get north of 40 tonight. You know, that's not normally his average for touches per game. I'm curious if they just wanted to attack this Argyle defensive line at the line of scrimmage or what, but he's uh he's been the he's been the workhorse tonight. Yeah, he Here only he averages again. 15 carries a game. On a counter, he's brought down behind the line again. Devin Owen, the na the Navy commit. Zero on zero crime. Yeah, Robinson slow to get up. Yeah, he's I mean he's taking a beating, right? That dude. Yeah. I mean, big guy, there's a bunch of little guys that are always, you know, hitting you low. And 
Yeah, and, and you know, there's a difference in, you know, if, if you're getting 30, 40 carries, you know, we've seen Tito Bice have that game, but, you know, against La Vega a few years ago, but he's gaining six, seven, eight yards a carry. He's the one delivering the punishment. And but his when team's in the game. Yeah, but when you're getting drugged down behind the line of scrimmage, you're just getting banged up. You know, that's, that's tough. Right. It's tough on a young man. Floyd out to pass, connects out in the right flat. Some room along the right sideline. Micah Roberts on the tackle. A uh, gain of about eight for Jack Plunk. But uh, that's going to be, yeah, they're bringing out their punt team. Yep. That's in fourth and four. Well, yeah, we'll turn into a punt. Been a weapon for him tonight. So Argyle is, uh, I guess, trying to decoy him into kicking one direction or the other. Certainly looks like it. Yeah, Bruce is here on the left hash. Denton punting from the right hash. And oh. his ball skips back, and this punt won't go anywhere. Devin Owen tackles the punter down. As it was a bad snap that rolled back to the punter. He could not get it away. Yeah, in his defense, he's had about three or four of those snaps tonight. He's always had to get down there and get him. That one just got away from him. Jackson Higgins is the punter for Denton, and he fielded that punt, and Devin Owen was already on top of him. No chance to even try to kick it, and he goes down, and Argyle will have their best starting field position at the Denton 11. Yeah, it, uh, you got to think they're just going to try and punch it in from here, right? Preston Slayton in the backfield. McGuire Gasperson still in the game. Hand off to Slayton up the middle. Now bounces it out right. Bounces further out to the boundary. Into the end zone. Preston Slayton. This carry goes for 11 and a touchdown all aboard Argyle. He goes inside. He cuts outside. He starts to go back inside. Comes back outside again and all the way into the end zone. I don't think he got touched, did he? I think. No, I don't all think the so. way to the end zone. And the, uh, the Broncos, I think, just had enough. 48 nothing is the lead now for Argyle. That may be the last of the starters you see. Yeah. 303 remaining in this third quarter. As the Rufo Cabra PAT is on the way in good. 49 nothing now. Argyle over it. Yeah, and you know what? That's Argyle football, and it always has been, right? Argyle, I don't care if they're losing in the first quarter or the second quarter, it's the second half where Argyle usually catches people and beats people. And, Argyle had a pretty good second quarter, but the third quarter has been really good also, and uh, it just kind of drove that final nail. The Evergreen Lawn and Landscape Drive Summary is an easy one. One play, 11 yards. About uh, eight seconds, maybe. Sure, you got to think how long it did it take Preston to get in the end zone. Yep. You know, he probably ended up running about 30 yards to get there. Right. Okay. But uh, another senior scoring. As Kreckler has scored three times. Lane Stewart has scored three times. And now Preston Slayton. And look, seven touchdowns by seven seniors. Three seniors. But all, all touchdowns are by seniors. You're showing me some bad news over there, Mitch. Yeah. Um, the Diamondbacks put up three, it looks like. Off of uh, Uvalde. World Series game one going on in Arlington. Senior night here at Eagle Stadium. Argyle leads by 49 over the Denton Broncos. Beckham Kim Kimbrels kick off. Lands at the two. Skirts out past uh, in the back of the end zone. It'll be another touchback, and the Denton Broncos will begin at the 25 yard line. Starting to see some new faces come in for Argyle. As Xavier Trotter is checked into the game. This has Thomas Irwin, Colton Rockmore is out on the outside. Watson Bells in at safety. Cade Manning in at linebacker. Malik Bracey at the other corner. And Cooper Slayton, the twin of Preston. And Devin Owen an outside linebacker. And we still got Logan Gregory and Jack Hurt in the ball game. Now handoff, off tackle to the right. And this one, pass a line of scrimmage, and or pass the first down mark, pass the midfield. Pushed out by Devin Owen, uh, one of the backup running backs, Davis. So uh, probably the biggest play tonight for Denton. He's got an Argyle Eagle down. Looks like a little cramp, but man, what a uh, what a great play by Devin Owen. He he was on the far side of the field from that play and never gave up. Ended up 
running him down just past midfield. And Jaden Davis, the junior running back, got to be the third string running back because you know, we've called Gladney's name a couple times. But Mitch, I mean, there's the difference. Uh, there's a kid who hasn't gotten a carry tonight, still has some energy, still has some juice, a nice looking run there by the junior. Yeah, and he just got a crease, right? Found it, cut through it. You got a bunch of next year's model in there, you know, playing, and sometimes they're, they're not the same level, and they just took advantage of it and had a nice game. Justice Jones hobbles off. Appears to be okay and didn't. Uh, from the Argyle 47, it's Davis again along that right end. Makes another man miss. Spins off of him down the Argyle 40. Brought down by Devin Owen again. Boy, Devin Owen's everywhere. Yeah. And you know what? The reason uh, the reason these starters are so good is because they get time like this when they're younger, right? And they're not the starter. And uh, it's this time in games where your team next year is built. John Hurt, Tanner Kane, and Xavier Trotter across the line for your Argyle Eagles. And Materio still in the game with Owen and Manning. Lloyd in the shotgun. Play action, looking left. Covered up pretty well. Now rolls out left and will throw it away. As credit John Hurt on the pressure. Also, uh, also a special shout out to Colt Rockamore. Good coverage along the left side. He took away Floyd's first option. And it'll be third and three for the yeah. Broncos. 2.04 remaining in this third quarter. Argyle up 49. The heat was on him too, right? He was running as hard as he could, but he, he only had about two more steps before he was going to get tracked down. So he did a good job just getting rid of it. In motion across the line is Jack Plunk and a handoff to Davis. Met at the line of scrimmage. Tanner Kane in on the tackle. Here you got another decision on fourth down if you're Denton. Well, there is no decision. It's 49 to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, these these fourth and shorts. And, you know, your decision know. is what play are we running? Yeah, here? okay. Yeah, what? the score should probably dictate your decision here. So what are you doing? You're them. There's not a ton of great options, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't really, you haven't had much success throwing the ball. I mean, you might as well just try to run. I think I'd try one of those shorter pass routes that they had some luck with early. Here's a handoff to the right. Trying to follow the jet sweep is Davis, but met in the backfield by Devin Owen. Another tackle for loss for Owen. And the Argyle defense gets off the field. Yeah, he lost three yards, I think, on that carry. He, he never got to the line of scrimmage before somebody was on him. And, uh, maybe a little too slow developing there. They had a motion guy, I guess, who was going to come out. And, Maybe be the lead blocker, but he just, you know, when, when, you, when you go the same direction as the motion man, you're just kind of drawing attention to that area of the field also. So, and Clark, there, there are a few members of the defensive line in the backfield. Oh, absolutely. John Hurt just destroyed the guy in front of him. It was wonderful to see. All right, Argyle offense takes over at their own 44. New QB. And it's Chase Bagley into the game. His first run will go for a first down and then some. As, yeah, a new quarterback in the game. As, uh, Jarrett Wagner hands off to Chase Bagley, and it's a gain of 11 and a first down already into Denton territory. As Chase Bagley on the carry for 11, brought down by Brandon Garcia. Yeah, fun to watch these guys. I mean, you'll, you'll get to see a bunch of them here in the next couple of years. It's fun to watch them tonight. Wagner again hands off to Bagley, hit the backfield, spins off of him, and fights his way back to the line. May have gotten a yard out of all that. As Bagley brought down by Brandon Crane, but Bagley was hit a couple yards deep in the backfield. Yeah, the backside cornerback was blitzing, had him from three yards deep, but couldn't hang on. 33 seconds remain in this third quarter. Argyle with the ball, moving left to right. There's a check with me here as Jarrett Wagner stares at the sideline. A lot of time on that play clock still to go. Makes the play call to Chase Bagley, claps, and here we go. Pass out right, caught by Jackson Green up the right sideline, now brought down at the 30. So that's uh, Ethan Fetters on the reception. He's brought down by Kaz Murphy. And Fetters catches the first down for the Argyle offense. Yeah, got to hurry. You only got six seconds. They're going to try and get it off. I wouldn't think they would. Uh, yeah. With one second, they do get it off. Hand off to Bagley up the middle. He is corralled by a couple different Broncos. And that'll do it for this third quarter. 
as Argyle puts up 28 points in the quarter. Dominant third quarter for the Argyle Eagles. And we'll head to the fourth quarter as Argyle leads the Denver Broncos 49-0 here on Senior Night. This is Eagle football, and it will continue in a moment. The real estate station owned by longtime Argyle residents Dave and Kathy Salisbury has been around since 1986 and was the first real estate office to be established in Argyle. The real estate station provides full office support and house marketing and an experienced sales team consisting of agents who live in and know the Argyle area. Whether you are buying, selling, or leasing, they are ready to serve you. Supporting Argyle ISD for over 15 years, they are proud to be a district-level Eagle partner again this year. And they were chosen to be Argyle ISD's real estate advisors. The real estate station, they are your hometown real estate experts. A trusted community staple for over 15 years, Rapid Med Urgent Care is more than just an urgent care. From well checks to minor emergency care, our goal is to keep you well or get you feeling better sooner. We also now offer Rapid Wellness, providing therapeutic IV infusions, injections, weight loss options, and allergy testing and treatment. Walk-ins are welcome or visit rapidmed.com and book your visit today. Rapid Med Urgent Care, your hometown emergency care doctors with Texas sized hearts and proud supporters of our Argyle Eagles. Now offense already ready to go and it's a Chase Bagley carry up the middle. Hit by a few Broncos after a gain of about four. There's a secondary, a second down carry goes until Brandon Crane brings him down at the Ditton 30. Oh, makes it the 28. It'll be a third and six for this Argyle offense. Still going with some tempo here in the fourth quarter as they lead. 49-0 here is uh, 30 seconds into the fourth quarter on the senior night here at Eagle Stadium. Third and six. Wagner makes the handoff to Bagley. Looking out right. No, Comebacker is caught by Brooks Bryan and brought down immediately, but Bryan with the first down inside the Denton 15, brought down by Bryan McCaud. Uh, I said that was Brooks Bryan. That's actually Cooper Slayton out there. The Slate brothers getting into it, right? You know what? Clark, you may have to help me with that number out there. It's a two-something. We'll get to it here in a second. Bagley up the middle. Makes a man miss. Wow. Initiates contact at the eight. And down to the six is Chase Bagley. And brought down by Maldonado. And it's, and it's two eight out on that far sideline. So that's Chris Munster the catch uh, on third down to set up the first down carry by Bagley, which goes for eight and second and two from the Denton six. Is that Herman's kid? Wagner to, to Bagley. Bagley loses a couple here. Credit Brandon Crane. They tackle for loss. Yeah, and, and Wagner did a great job on that pass that he threw on the third down. And, just stood in the pocket and went through his progressions and saw the open receiver is just kind of sitting in an empty spot and made a great throw to him. And it's third and five from the Denton nine. Wagner with the check it, or look at me on the sideline. You got Bagley to his left. Fetters split out wide left. You got Jackson Green and Chris Munster split out wide right. Claps and Whoa. it's a fake handoff now. A pass over the middle oh. is dropped. As a play action tried to hit Ben Godfrey over the middle. And knocking out the pass was Skyler Maldonado. And he hit Ben Godfrey at the right time on the goal line. Incomplete pass, but a great look there for the Argyle offense. Yeah, and he made a great throw. And uh, it was just going to be a hard catch because the contact was right there, right when the ball got there. And uh, almost had it. So it was a great play all the way around, um, except for Argyle just came up a little bit short hanging on to it. So Argyle will try for three here. This will go down as a 20 yeah, 23-yard field goal. And it's up and good. So 26-yard field goal. Anthony Rubacabra. Rubacabra. This field goal is up and good. Argyle leading 52-0 with 9.47 remaining in this one. Eagle football will continue in a moment. This broadcast is made possible by the generous support of our corporate advertising sponsors who have enabled Argyle ISD athletic programs to achieve many exceptional accomplishments, including state championships in multiple sports and 10 straight Lone Star Cups. 
These sponsorships remain the primary source of funding for the Booster Club, which directs the expenditures towards Argyle Athletics and clubs at the high school and middle school level. Your corporate sponsorship provides the best opportunity for our student athletes to reach their full potential here at Argyle ISD, and in return, we offer numerous advertising packages which fit your budget to brand your business with high visibility in the stadiums or right here on these airwaves. Do you want to be a sponsor and support the athletics here at Argyle ISD? Contact Brian and Shelly Stone at aebc.sponsorship at gmail.com to begin your support. Go Eagles! Welcome back to Eagle Stadium. Blake Jones with Mitch Cullen alongside. Clark McNulty on the sideline. Bryce Rapp spotting for us here tonight. Thanks to the talent crew for putting on the presentation on YouTube. And thanks to all of you for joining us here on Senior Night at Eagles Stadium. And it's actually Jackson Green doing the kickoff to a fair catch at the 30-yard line for Denton. Argyle leading 52-0 over the Denton Broncos. 9.47 remaining in this one. It's a wonderful, crisp night here at Eagle Stadium. This kick was moved up an hour to uh, to beat the rain, but you know, Mitch, I don't think there's really not really jeopardy. We may not even get rain on the way on the way home. Yeah, I don't even know if we're gonna. It's gonna be later tonight, but you know what? You can't see that moon at all, so I guess there's clouds over there yeah. somewhere, right? Or it's moved up over our heads. I don't think so. But so this Broncos possession will begin at their own 32, moving left to right. Floyd bubble screen out left is caught. Pushed out of bounds after a gain of just a couple is Ian Watkins. He's shoved out by Grady Emerson. Grady came up before the game, Mitch. Uh, Emerson yeah. starting shortstop for the baseball team. I'm going to assume so. Yep. It'll be super fun to watch the baseball team this year. You know, all things being equal, they should have a really good run. They got a ton of talent coming back. Grady Emerson being one of them is just a sophomore this year. It's a gain of three. Where Immaterio shoves him out, and the carry here goes nowhere. This is going to be Thomas again as Tyson O'Neill in the backfield gets a tackle for loss. As I'll try to get, try to highlight some of the seniors. I see one. That's Michael Neville out uh, at corner. That's a senior playing on senior night. As we got Cooper Slayton in the ball game, another senior. Grady Emerson on the other side at corner. Xavier Sanchez is still in the game, but at free safety right now is. Watson Bell, Floyd claps, gets a snap and a pass out right. It's complete for a first down. That catch is Josiah Marshall. He's brought down by Neville, but Mitch, you gotta wonder where's that been? That's great timing on that route. Well, yeah, it, that was his, his best pass of the night, but uh, he's got time. Right? Yeah. He's got time to throw, which he didn't have in the first half. And, uh, took advantage of it there, made a good throw. I mean, he, he's shown some some talent, some of the stuff he's done. You know, I'm sure he struggles with his offensive line a little bit, but seems to have a good arm. Yeah, Floyd to Marshall for a first down up to the 44 yard line, back to Thomas running left and drug down from behind and in with an attitude. That is Hank Woodard in the backfield, another tackle for loss. This Eagles defense back to the den 40, it'll be second and long. Yep, they just, they just kind of seem to shoot themselves in the foot, right? When they get these second and long, and then they're going to have to throw to stay in it. Yeah, I just don't know if you can run out wide on this on this Eagles defense. They don't have the speed to do it. Argyle has too much speed to do it. Except for Floyd, Floyd throws this ball away, but uh, I believe we're going to get a holding. And this may go on Hayden Castro. Let's uh, see if we can get the call from the referee. I think you decline, right? Yeah, Floyd eventually threw it away. Holding, number 60, offense. The penalty will be declined. Brings up third down. Good call by Clark. P penalty was on number 60, Hayden Castro. And penalty was declined. So you got third and 14 for the Broncos. 7.30 remaining in this one. It's calls like that from Clark is the reason we've got it down. Oh, I mean, yeah, who else would you want down there? Nobody. Nobody. Floyd looking at the Denton sideline for the play call. You got Tyson O'Neill along the defensive line. Clock running, 7-17. Cade Manning and Max Bland still in there at, uh, at linebacker. Clock down to 7.05. Zero on the play clock. Yeah, play, I'm not sure the play clock is working. <laughs> 
now we finally get whistles in a timeout by Denton. But you got to wonder, how long had that clock been at zero <laughs> before Denton calls that timeout? Oh, but they give uh, it the timeout on that. Let's give a. So, so why do they not have a horn that goes off, right? Why do they not like a shot clock violation? Yeah, you you'd have to be pretty you you'd have to be pretty quick on the trigger there because you don't want it going off during the play, do you? Well, I mean, it, it goes off in basketball games and they keep playing. Oh, you're talking about the shot clock? Yeah. Yeah, but that ball is already in the air. Like, they've already let go. Well, I mean, I you probably think want a horn going with your quarterback back to pass, right? Well, then don't snap it that close <laughs> to the clock. Well, yeah, I guess that's a fix. It's 52 nothing here at Eagle Stadium. This is the way you want your senior night, right? This uh, is the way you want it. Everybody's in the game, right? Everybody's going to have a great feeling after the game. Uh, and it's a it's a vast difference from your homecoming game, right? Because you played Emerson on homecoming, and that was quite the barn burner. Yes. So one of the two needs to be uh, a game like this, and it happens to be this one. Okay, it's third and 14, didn't with the ball in their own territory. Runs a jet jet sweep out left, and like Mitch and I have been saying, I don't know if you can run outside on this Josiah Eagles defense. Marshall. And Josiah Marshall didn't find much. And that third down carry goes for not a lot. Devin Owen there to make sure that that did not go any further than it did. And uh, Mitch, I think Ditton's going to punt. I think they are. They got the wind behind them, so let's see how far this one goes. Yeah, if your offense isn't as fast as the defense, running wide typically doesn't work. Yeah, but they haven't been able to run much up the middle. I guess, I, I don't know. It's just called uh, one team better than the other. <laughs> yeah, not so many words. Oh, my gosh. And, and a low snap handled really well by Higgins. This punt way better than the, all the others. Uh, Watson Bell back to retrieve it at the 15. And he's up past the 30. Runs left, trying to find the wall. Gets around it, but finally oh. shoved out of bounds at the 43-yard line. It's about a 30-yard return, uh, return after a 40-yard punt. So pretty good uh, special teams there. Bra uh, Braden Crane on the tackle for Denton. And we'll see if we can sneak in some of these fourth quarter sponsors. Did you know we had there. fourth quarter sponsors? Did you know it? Uh, no, I, I did, but I'd love to hear who it is. Yeah, it, it's brought to us by Lori Jacobson, the Legacy Group, Restico Grill, and 1845 Taste Texas Steakhouse, 308 Construction, and we'll proceed here in a second. Jarrett Wagner in at quarterback, hands to Chase Bagley, tries to extend out right, but brought down from behind. Nice uh, backside uh, chase there by Ryan Codd. Brings down Bagley after a loss of one be second 11 for this Argyle offense. Yeah, Jill and Josh Pizzullo of North Lake, Papa John's. Oh, hit me with that coupon code. Argyle 24 for 25% off. Okay, all right. Second and 11, Bagley up the middle, now bounces out to the right hash mark and runs into a couple Broncos near midfield. He'll be drugged down at the 49, gain of about six. Char Getting Poole up out of the pile is uh, Devontae Burnett for Denton. Yeah, Char Poole and Patio, this is a great time of year to be sitting out in your backyard, right? Fifth Gear Automotive, Sherry Brunson at Cinch Cleaners, Brent Bowen, attorney at law, Kim Redding, Magnolia Realty, Kenny Arthur at Chick-fil-A on 407. Thank you for the sandwiches up here tonight, Kenny, and the cookies. Third and four, Bagley again up the middle. He's got the first down to Moore. Down to the Denton 40 and battling his way up to the Denton 35. Took four or five Broncos to bring him down. Credit Burnett with another tackle, but Bagley into Denton territory with a gain of 19. Cliff Collins, Argyle Rehab Chiropractic, the Sunny Dart Group, JLBB Company, NWC General Construction, and sponsor of our post game show, Park Place Lexus and Land Rover Grapevine. Thank you, Park Place, for giving us all cars to drive all season. It's yeah. Been a nice little park. I've, uh, I've loved my Lexus. Yeah. My Range Rovers all murdered out. It's a great car. <laughs> Gain of four from Bagley. Uh, brought down by Garcia. Sets up a second and six. Four minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Argyle up 52 nothing. Wagner, too high. Yeah. On a pass. Just overcooked him a little bit too much, too, I think. It's uh, Brooks Bryan on the attempt. He'd run a little, a little stop on a slant. 
Wagner put it too far over his head, incomplete. Sets up third and six at the dip 31. Wagner can spin the throw. He throws yeah, a nice he really ball. can. Left-handed. Wagner from the shotgun. We got a whistle before this snap. And it's going to be a false start. The second on Argyle tonight. False start. Number 28, offense. Five-yard penalty. Argyle's such a, uh, a disciplined team, too. You know, when you, when you think about the, the two false starts, it's nothing, right? And then it will probably be addressed tomorrow in that room talking about it because they want to eliminate those. Both by wide receivers. Yeah. They want the ball. We'll do antsy on the outside. Wagner back to pass, throwing up a left sideline. He's open and turning and can't bring it in. That's Brooks Bryan who had snuck past the Broncos secondary, was left all alone but uh, couldn't decide if he wanted to turn around or look over his shoulder. And it goes off of the hands of Brooks Bryan, incomplete, and it's fourth and 11. And the Argyle offense will go for this one. We'll update you on that Ranger score here after this play. Wagner, fake to Bagley. Wagner looking opposite way, right hash, oh. running under it, and caught. Yes, he caught it. That's Jackson Green. I saw a towel hit the ground. I was wondering if that was a football, but no, Jackson Green with the catch and the score. Argyle, a 36-yard touchdown. Uh, Jarrett Wagner to Jackson Green. All aboard. That was a great throw, wasn't it? That was a dime into the wind. And I mean, it was just perfectly on spot. Nice spiral, everything. That was just picture perfect. Argyle PAT is good, and Argyle leads by 59. Hold on, we'll give you that Ranger score after we come back. It's 59-0 Argyle over Denton here in district play with 332 remaining. And Argyle, the Eagle football will continue after this word from 407 Barbecue. 407 Barbecue is a proud supporter of the Argyle Eagles. Named the very best barbecue in all of DFW several times over, 407 Barbecue offers an array of award-winning smoked meats, including mouth-watering brisket and ribs. No plate is complete without one of their world-famous sides and a bowl of Grandma's Banana Pudding. Family owned and operated by your neighbors right here in Argyle. See their menu and catering options online at 407BBQ.com. Or see for yourself at I-35W, exit 407. 407 Barbecue. Buying or selling a home is likely your greatest investment. Lori Jacobson and the Legacy Group believe in making the process easy and simple for your family. Whether you're moving into your forever home in Argyle, need help remodeling or staging, or are a first-time buyer, Lori's dedicated to making sure all of her clients walk away from the transaction satisfied. She has a saying that you walk in as a client, but you leave as a friend. So it's no secret why she's been named Best Real Estate Agent by D Magazine yet again. Lori Jacobson encourages all the Argyle Eagles to leave a legacy both on and off the field. Go Eagles. Some drama on the kickoff as Ditt mishandles the kick, sputters around, but eventually recovered by the Broncos. And uh, teasing you about the Rangers score. Clark, you got, I think you got your phone down there. Huh? What's the score? I do. The, the score is now 4-3 to three in favor of the Diamondbacks. Uh, Texas tied it up in the bottom of the in the bottom of the third, but uh, leadoff home run, solo shot by Arizona puts them ahead. Tommy Pham. Pham is Rangers trailing by one in game one of the World Series right now. That one's still early. This one not. 326 remaining in this one. Argyle on top, 59 nothing. We'll see if we can discuss some players of the game here coming up. This carry for Ditton, Dwayne Castillo, the fourth ball carrier tonight for the Ditton Broncos, and Devin Owen in there again for the Eagles. It's going to officially be a tackle for loss, so Devin Owen, another tackle for loss. Second 11 for the Broncos. Floyd played the whole game 
tonight for the Broncos. Another handoff to Castillo running left. And that one it will be another tackle for loss. Hank Woodard in the backfield on that one. Yeah, Argyle still uh, aggressive on defense. Clock still running, 220. And doesn't look like uh, it's in too big a hurry to run their third down play either. Tanner Kane on the defensive line. John Hurt still in the ball game. And that's another Castillo run, and it's mirror images of the first two. That's another tackle for loss. Luke Fetters is in there. And Hank Woodard and Tanner Kane. As we're under two minutes to go, Argyle with a 59 0 lead. See uh, Thomas Irwin in there at safety. It's primarily been this, the same secondary here for much of the third and fourth quarter. As Grady Emerson on the opposite side corner, Watson Bell at safety, Thomas Irwin and uh, Hunter Neville in that corner, as well as Cooper Slayton. Luke Fetters was just in on the stop, as well as McCade Manning at middle. Yeah, Hank Woodard, there's your, your 11 on the field right now as Denton takes a timeout. They milk the clock down to 116 before calling a timeout. So, Clark, I'll bring you into this. Uh, Mitch and Clark, who do we like for players of the game? Well, I'm looking at Jake Kreckler. I mean, with three touchdowns, what a fabulous 75-yard run. And then it just seems like Devin Owens' name has been called over and over and over again tonight. Kind of reminds me of uh, some players of old that would seem like we called their name all the time. I, I concur. Okay. Or maybe even Preston Slate, right? Did a good game. Yeah, yeah, Preston Slate got into the end zone. We talked to Preston last week, so well, let's go maybe uh, somebody new. Yeah, Clark, I, I like uh, I like what you're thinking, uh, Crackler and Owen. Just move quickly. I I, I also uh, did a little survey down here with Chase Petter, and he agrees. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then it is so. Signed by Chase Petter. Denton Punt is back, and Watson Bell watches this one roll into his territory. He may have been given the do not return no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> As this punt is down at the Argyle 29. Nice punt for the Broncos. DNR. Yeah. Do not return. Right. Yes, with 105 remaining, Argyle will take over. They see a couple runs up the middle, or maybe even a couple kneel downs, and this will end this this bout at Eagle Stadium. Yeah, I tell you, I've been impressed with Jarrett Wagner. He's looked pretty smooth back there, right? I mean, he's had a couple good throws, no mistakes. What you want to see from a backup that comes in? It will be a kneel down. We'll have to do this one more time. Before the clock hits zero. But a nice win. I mean, you wanted to take care of business, right, Mitch? I mean, you didn't want to mess around, even though, you know, with two, uh, turnovers on the first two drives of the game, you'd wondered what game this would turn into, but Argyle quickly righted that shift. Yeah, I, I'm not like Clark. I didn't think it was a trap game. I thought, I thought Argyle was drastically superior, and... Um, they proved it tonight. You're right. If, if you can if you turn the ball over twice like that and still overcome it, it just kind of shows you know, what kind of team you have. And Argyle did, did that tonight more. So this won't be the final game at Eagle Stadium, but that will do it for senior night tonight as Argyle defeats the Denton Broncos 59 to nothing. As Argyle will improve to 6-2 and two on the year. But better yet, 5-0 and oh in district play as Denton falls to 4-5 and five and 3-2 and two in district play. As it's shaping up as Argyle will be your district winner. And I think you're looking at the fourth place Denton Broncos in district. So, and you know, both these teams keep winning. This uh, might may see them in, uh, in the playoffs. You never know. But that's going to do it to, for for tonight's game as Argyle wins 59 nothing over Denton. The Park Place uh, post-game show with our players of the game. A chat with Coach Rogers is headed your way next after this word from RDBs. 
Howdy, folks. Marty B. here, inviting you to come to each of our four amazing restaurants. At Marty B.'s, join us for an outstanding atmosphere of family, food, fun, and entertainment. Or join us at Rustico Wood Fired Grill and Wine Bar for an intimate date night in a rustic, elegant setting. Looking for a taste of upscale Texas? Join us at 1845, where it's designed like Dallas, but tastes like Fort Worth. Come experience amazing at all of our fine restaurants. And new this summer, put a pep in your two-step at Marty B.'s Coffee Co., right next to Marty B.'s Restaurant. Look forward to seeing you there. This is Billy Klein. DSW Door Repair was repairing, restoring, and replacing doors and houses all over town when a couple of guys from Austin showed up and said, Billy, we need to take this nationwide. I said, I don't know how to do that. They said, we do. And that's how YourNewDoor.com was born. I'm telling you this in case it all works out and we become a big deal nationwide. You'll be able to say, I was there the day it was born. Billy and Jennifer help sponsor our ball games. Check it out, yournewdoor.com. Park Place is proud to support Argyle High School and all you Eagles fans out there. You deserve to feel like a winner, whether you're cheering on your favorite team or shopping for your new favorite car. And at Park Place Lexus Grapevine and Land Rover DFW, you'll enjoy a fully customized luxury dealership experience that'll make you feel like the MVP. So head over to your nearest Park Place dealership or visit parkplace.com and see what makes them the experts in excellence. A trusted community staple for over 15 years, Rapid Med Urgent Care is more than just an urgent care. From well checks to minor emergency care, our goal is to keep you well or get you feeling better sooner. We also now offer Rapid Wellness, providing therapeutic IV infusions, injections, weight loss options, and allergy testing and treatment. Walk-ins are welcome or visit rapidmed.com and book your visit today. Rapid Med Urgent Care, your hometown emergency care doctors with Texas-sized hearts and proud support of our Argyle Eagles. All right, we're back at Eagle Stadium after Argyle takes down the Denton Broncos with a score of 59 to 0. And let's quickly get to our players of the game as I see a Clark McNulty seeing with a Devin Owen. And uh, Clark, why don't, you, uh, why don't you take it away? Well, yes, I'm here with uh, number zero. In the, uh, you can stand up. <laughs> number zero in the uh, program, but number one in our hearts. But Devin, it seemed like we called your name 50 times tonight. Um, this could have been a little bit of a trap game. I mean, they are the second place team, and then you, we stumbled a little bit early with with holding onto the ball. But one thing was constant is your defense was suffocating tonight. Yes, sir. I mean, coaches they put up a great game plan. Um, we knew that they were 70 percent run. 30% uh, pass. I mean, they didn't necessarily throw the ball a whole lot in the first quarter, so we kind of just honed in on our uh, rushes and just tr trying to pressure the quarterback. They haven't had more than three sacks all year, so we were just trying to give them some different looks and all that stuff. So it was a lot of fun to get out there. Now, we were talking about this earlier, is that you did just a, fun, a phenomenal job over on the other sideline over there where the, where the wide receiver got away a little bit, and you just seemed to come out of nowhere and track them down and get them out of bounds probably salvage the shutout for the for the Argyle defense. Is that an extra ice cream sandwich or an extra donut or just a pat on the back? Um, not an ice cream sandwich. That's only for O-linemen. Uh, they're, they're pretty lucky. Uh, earlier in the season, I gave them all zebra cakes to protect me back when I was at running back. Uh, but I believe that we do get donuts. Um, and I think we had a butt tackle, which is kolaches, too. So I'm pretty excited about that. A butt tackle. Now, wait a minute. Okay, so are you part of the group? Can I see your helmet real quick? Because I noticed this tonight. Oh, you don't have the flying pig on the back. But no, no, no. No, the flying pig is edge hogs, and that's uh, corners only. Oh, no, I see. So yeah. you're not special enough to have the flying pig. No, no, so no, so what is a uh, butt no, tackle? No, sir. Not, not athletic enough, no. Explain what a butt tackle is. Hold up. Where's this coming from? Up, up here at the booth. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. My, I was like... Hey, Devin, we're up here. Oh, okay, yeah, no. Hey, I his see mouth's that. not moving, okay, but so I hear something. <laughs> a butt tackle is whenever you have a defender in front of you, you got a running back, and you hit the defender into the running back, and he falls down. That's called a butt tackle. Okay. Yeah, so you earn kolaches on that. So All right. I think we got one of those, so I'm pretty excited. Awesome. Hey, one more question. So um, any extra motivation on senior night for your last home district game? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's just crazy to think about whenever I'm, like, sitting in kindergarten, ready to go out to recess, and my teacher's like, class of 2024, like, they're calling all of us out, and we're like, 
it's kind of corny, but like you really never know how fast it's going to come. But like, whenever you finish the game and you hear that final final clock go out, I mean, it's just I mean, it's just kind of crazy to think about. Like, it, I'm still very thankful to be here because I know some people would kill to be able to play on this field. For I mean, sure. it's just it's just awesome to be out here. So yeah, well, awesome. It's great, uh, congratulations. It, it, yeah, it's great. This is senior night, a big win, but uh, you get a playoff game here, so that's something to look forward to, right? Yes, sir. I'm pretty excited about that too. Uh, I think it's Odie White, I believe. So we uh, we actually played them last year, so. It'll be fun. Yeah, but a home playoff game is always always really cool. But okay, yep. so Devin, you talked about you you did make a move to running back. Now you're back on defense. Do you kind of feel back at home at linebacker? Oh yes, sir. Of course. Um, I've grown up playing linebacker and running back my whole life. But I just kind of stuck with linebacker. Uh, I mean, I I play football. I mean, <laughs> it's really it's really nothing. I mean, I've kind of told the coaches that as soon as I moved here, wherever you need me, I'm I'm willing to go there. But so, he, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pretty excited to come back to linebacker. Yeah, but even, you know, you're playing outside linebacker and the play is not going your way, but you're still making tackles. It just feels like, you know, this is your natural position. So uh, excited to see you play that uh, for a few more games here. And congratulations on being our defensive player of the game. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. All right. That is Devin Owen, our defensive player of the game. Didn't have official stats, but I'm uh, curious to see how many tackles he had tonight. Yeah. He was all over the place. As uh, We'll try to see if we can get Jake Kreckler here. Yeah, and in not, just a moment. It's not just tackles; it's key tackles, like the one yeah. we discussed, where he chased down the, you know, the receiver down there, or the running back on the far side of the field. It's, you know, it's guys like that that have a motor that never give up on the play, right? And, and really, it kind of personifies Argyle football, and that's that's what he did. Yeah, it's uh, Clarkson trying to find a, yeah, no, whole taking a picture. Of people. He's taking a picture. Yeah, I can't believe that. I can't either. Um, Why would you want that in a picture? Why would you want Clark in a picture? <laughs> I'm sure we all do. And we're trying to find a Jake Crickler. And in fact, if you find it, if you find a Coach Rogers, wouldn't mind a Coach Rogers as well. As, yeah, let's. Looks like he's got a. Let's see if do you have Coach Rogers down there, Clark? Uh, he's uh. He's getting grandbaby kisses. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't want to interrupt that, do we? Uh, let's see. So let's take a look at uh, some of the box score. Yes, there we go. I think we're. All right, 59-0 uh, to finish out your home regular season. It looked like you got a lot of guys until the last touchdown. All of them scored by seniors. So you really have to be happy with their participation. Yeah, you're going to have to excuse my voice. <coughs> um, but... Uh, the kids did well. I, I thought they played with tons of energy, tons of enthusiasm. Um, they're worried about their performance, not the performance of their opponent. Uh, I love the mindset and approach. Uh, our team is really maturing at the right at the right time, and and uh, they're a lot of fun to coach. Coach, uh, how good is your tell on the sideline as far as how the game goes? You know, do you do you have to wait until you watch film to get a lot of your critiques or, or do you have a, a few plays in mind in your head right now of, of we need to fix that oh I I um, you know have a mental recollection of, of you know points in the game that I want to look at in video and make sure I saw it right um, that's that's always been for 36 years my ability to see it and remember it uh, I got a pretty good snapshot before the play and a pretty good snapshot after the play and there's only one or two ways you can to get there so uh, I, I you know, I store that away, and I look at the next day to confirm uh, if I saw what I saw. But, uh, you know, there's some times in the season where I don't have a great understanding of what's going on or how they're blocking it. Um, but that's that's um, that's rare. Yeah, so the first two possessions for your offense tonight end in turnovers. And, you know, we had discussed, you know, do, are you overlooking a team on senior night? But uh, I'll leave it up to you. Were, you. were those just unlucky plays? Yeah, I think they were. I, I, I don't think they were... Uh, um, indicative of a, a lackadaisical approach or, or a carelessness or lack of focus. I, I think that's just going to happen sometimes. And, uh, you know, you try to minimize it and not to uh, recklessly put the team, you know, in jeopardy of, of winning or losing. Are you going uh, hot water and honey? What's your, uh, what's your drink tonight? I don't know. That coffee's been pretty good. Kind of <laughs> cut it out just so I could talk a little bit. But, uh, I hadn't had a couple of coffees since halftime, so now I can't even hardly talk. Okay, well, uh, get in there and get your voice rested and appreciate your time tonight. All right, thanks, guys. All right, good win for the Argyle Eagles as they defeat Denton 59 nothing. as that was, uh, was Coach Rogers on with us. And 
Talk to Devin Owen, our defensive player of the game. Talk to Coach Rogers, and we'll see if we can find Jake Kreckler. Yeah, you know what's, what's kind of cool about that is you, you have a coach who's been there 36 years, right? And he knows he's playing an outgunned opponent, and he's still screaming his, <laughs> yeah, right. his vocal cords off, you know, because he wants to get it better, right? Yeah. And we'll take it some of the look, – look, look at some of the stats while we try to find Jake Kreckler. Uh, team stats tonight. Argyle, 26 first downs to Denton, 8. And just like that, just when I was ready to move on, you bring me back in. Here's, a, here's Clark like with that. Jake Kreckler. So Jake Kreckler, a, a three touchdowns on the ground tonight. I know I know we've talked before. Um, what made tonight so special? That 75-yard run, did, I didn't realize that you were that fast. How, did, was that extra motivation? Could you hear footsteps? Or was somebody waving a cheeseburger down there in the end zone? They were waving, they were waving a cheeseburger down there in the end zone. No, we started off a little slow, but we finally got our rhythm, and it was it was started off slow, but I'm glad we got our rhythm, and we put together a few nice drives, and yeah, it was pretty frustrating at first, but I'm glad we got it together. Well, and I noticed that right after the right after the fumble down at the goal line, they let you carry the ball. They they just gave you the ball. Um, was it just something somebody get in there and get a good punch on it, or? Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened. I I don't really know. I just lost the ball, but. Thank you to my coaches for just having that trust in me, and that's really that's a huge part of winning games is having that trust with your coaches and everything. All right, Jake, be honest. What's the punishment for a fumble? You got to do push-ups? What are we doing? I don't know. I did one against Emerson, and nothing happened, so I'm hoping they <laughs> let this one slide too. All right, so you had a 75-yard touchdown, and then I think you had like a 19-yard like a touchdown. Obviously, I think the 71, the, the 75 sticks out more because it's longer, but on the 19, you had to spin off a couple guys. Which one was your favorite? Uh, the 19, the 20, 75 yard one, I was pretty tired after, so I'll probably have to go with the 19 one. Okay. Yeah, you made it a couple nice moves on that one and yes, it bounced out to the outside. But uh, it seems like, you know, you're kind of getting your wind here as the running back. You're getting a lot more carries as of late. You're seeing your, your yards start to stack up. Are you just getting more and more comfortable carrying the ball for this football team? Yes, sir. And just having that swagger and finally being healthy is just a huge part of it. And our O line has just really been dominating the last few weeks. So. You know, I, and I, I'm sorry to break in on you, Blake, but I noticed on a couple of the runs that you really showed a lot of patience, where before I think you might have tried to stick it in there before the hole developed. Is that something that you've been working on? Yeah, that just goes back to watching film and just getting experience from the past games. And I could always find myself going a little bit too fast from time to time, so I tried to slow it down tonight. All right, Jake, last question for me. I know you moved in for your senior year, and this is really your fourth game at Eagle Stadium here on, on senior night. But I think, you know, when you moved to Texas, you wanted to be a part of this program of play for Coach Rogers. So what does playing tonight here on senior night mean for you? It's, just, it's awesome. It's such a great environment, and there's nothing like it. I came down here with high expectations, and they've all been lived up to. So it's great. Well, awesome. Congratulations, our player of the game. 22 carries, 204 yards, and three touchdowns. Congrats and enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Jake Crickler, our offensive player of the game. Andy wants to point out uh, Jake scored on a spin move. Off of a spin move. So uh, thanks to uh, Jake Crickler for a little bit of his time. So we, we uh, mentioned some of the team stats. Uh, Argyle, 26 first downs to Denton's 8. 532 yards of offense for Argyle to Denton's 113. Uh, 190 through the air. And 340 on the ground for Argyle. As some of the individuals, McGuire, 6 of 13 for 88 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Jarrett Wagner came in and was 3 of 6 passing for a touchdown. Of course, Kreckler, 22 for 204 and 3 touchdowns. Preston Slayton, 6 for 56 and a touchdown. Chase Bagley got 10 carries for 47 yards late in that one. Lane Stewart, 1 carry for 38 yards and a touchdown. Receiving for Argyle, Will Krizziak, 3 for 42. McGuire, uh... That wouldn't be McGuire. That'd be Jackson Green for one for 36. Will Hodson, two for 24. Lane Stewart, one for 22 and touchdown. Chris Munster, one for 14. And Ethan Fetters, one for 12. As uh, those are the stats from tonight's game. As uh, while we have a minute, uh, I know Argyle's game finished up a little early because it started early. Uh, but we're start starting to see some final scores pour in. So let's check in with our own Stephen Bartolotta. And, and Stephen, I understand that uh, there could be a dragon that could be slayed tonight. Whoa. Thank you, Blake. Well, some big time games tonight. District titles are on the line. And a big streak could be coming to an end. And we'll tell you about that in just a second. First, some District 3-5 ga A games to tell you about. Last night, Frisco Memorial, well, they ended their season on a high note. Winning 24-21 over Creekview to finish 2-4 in district play, 2-8 on the year. 
They block the game-tying field goal with five seconds left to pick up the win. This evening, one other game to tell you about. Lake Dallas, fresh off their big win over Emerson last week. No letdown tonight. They're rolling over Independence 35-3. to They lead that game at the half. And Emerson, who's dropped two straight heartbreakers to Lake Dallas and Argyle, they have the week off. Top 10 scores from 5A Division II to tell you about. Number one, Melissa. They have no trouble this evening with Princeton. They win it 56-13. to Number two, Lake Creek. They're 9-0 on the year, and they have a bye as they have one more game left in the regular season. Number three, Midlothian Heritage. Last night was in a battle with Arlington Seguin. They win it, though, 21-14. A Ryan Satterwhite interception with four minutes to play in the game sealed it for Heritage as quarterback Carter Rutenbar he threw for 150 yards. He also ran for 80 yards and a score. They're 9-0 on the year, and they are the district champions as well. Number four, Texas High. They lead White House early in this one. It's 10-7. That game is in the second quarter. Number five, Port Natchez Grove. They're at the half, and they have a nice lead over Nederland, 20-9. Number six, South Oak Cliff at Woodrow Wilson. Weather delay in that one. That should start a little bit later this evening. Number seven, Lovejoy. They're getting their game in against Greenville and having no trouble tonight. 42-7, to the Leopards cruise. That game is in the fourth quarter. Number eight, Alamo Heights. They will be taking on San Antonio Lanier. That is tomorrow evening. And last night, number 10, Colleyville Heritage. Well, they wrapped up the district title 4-5A championship, that is, with a 49-18 win over Polytechnic. Luke Ulrich, he passes for four touchdowns in the victory for the Panthers. Well, the two big, big ones to tell you about tonight in 6A. Number one, Duncanville, and number three, DeSoto. Who couldn't wait for this one? Two defending state champions, both undefeated, number one in Class 6A against number three. Well, Mother Nature had other plans. That game is suspended right now. No word because of the weather delay if that one will resume tonight. Hopefully they get that one in. The winner is the District 11 6A champion. And how about in uh, the other big one in Class 6A, number six, South Lake Carroll against number